tadi uh, sangat istimewa untuk kami di Anopo Indonesia uh, Saya rasa macam very high quality Statistics 
tapi what actually is going on so bila kan tu bila oh ni saya ingat cerita Pat kan saya ingat masa dengan cerita tu so walaupun saya daripada background Indian so saya boleh appreciate some benda yang like tabu tapi saya rasa benda ni bukan masalah di Malaysia I say to myself ini bukan masalah di Malaysia nanti I was exposed to what is uh, poverty and so forth so saya jumpa Dr. Fatima for about 25 minutes uh, to share how can we all humanly understand How deep is this problem in Malaysia? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. That's Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, I think to start with, I'm really happy. Uh, setting is very apa, santai, and I think this is what majlis apa discussion or even should be where we have apa to interaction, um, where we are learning from each other again, and that we hope that we gain something and then. Uh, we can create a uh, ripple effects outside that hopefully I can benefit the people unfortunately the people that we talk about here can and hopefully we don't misrepresent them juga um, actually isu kemiskinan hari ni luas and I think it's getting a lot more traction and we've been pushing juga supaya it gets attention from the media supaya the masses are aware tapi we want to make sure that the definition tu um, of kemiskinan hari ataupun period poverty tu betul Uh, selalu ni kalau kita dengar uh, isu kemiskinan hak tu, I hope that in Malaysia kita tak tersalah macam in other countries. So what's happening in other countries is when we talk about period poverty, dia jadi isu tak ada pet, kan? Uh, oh tak ada pet. But actually isu kemiskinan hak is when somebody, a, a young girl, maksudnya dah come of age ataupun uh, an adult female yang still menstruating, dia tak ada access untuk manage dia punya menstruation with dignity maksudnya safely and healthily so you can faham kan uh, half of our population is female um, and we menstruate for 30 to 40 years of our lives and it happens on a monthly basis so it's not a one time event it's not a uh, something that happens sometimes it happens a lot and often to so many of us tapi because of what we call the culture of consumer kita ada this issue of culture of consumer bila kita cakap pasal period in general so just give context dulu lah i just give context when we talk about menstruation we have what we call a culture of consumer we hide it okay kita don't say the word period we don't raise it in settings like this we don't even raise it in our uh, house kan kalau tengah makan dinner nobody is going to say hey i'm on my period or i need help kan you have to whisper it when we are at school we hide the product whether it's a clean product or dirty product walaupun baru beli pun we are taught to hide it don't use the word uh, sanitary pad kan kadang-kadang we teach girls ataupun girls atau all people our age generation lah particularly mungkin the younger generation ni better lah we're trying to build awareness and all of that so dia maybe dah tak use dah dulu macam guna perkataan macam roti ke macam tu kan and then even very clean baru beli punya pad individually are wrapped so that nobody sees it and when we need it we will whisper to ask for it from our friend and then our friend akan pass pass pun tak boleh bagi nampak bukan macam you know you have to hide it so we have hidden it so well it's a, our best kept secret as women can nobody knows when somebody is menstruating nobody knows what happens so even for people who are very privileged it's still very much a hidden issue even though it recurs every month kita experience it to half of us we keep it well hidden in our meeting rooms at the office kalau ada bocor ke apa ke nobody knows nobody knows what's happening so you, you can imagine the burden of that that we already conceal as women and then the people who are in need of it in different ways it could be vulnerabilities that are brought about upon because of poverty disability maybe domestic violence maybe other vulnerabilities maybe they are issue uh, they are refugees so they feel that they do not have the capacity to ask for help so the benda tu dia akan layers upon layers upon layers of hardship to access that so what do women or girls need to menstruate uh, to menstruate safely and healthily and with dignity i think as women kita tahulah kan but i think why the conversation needs to happen together is that sometimes half of the population know something but what they don't what they know is might not be accurate ataupun does not tell the right stories ataupun is pictured ataupun um, ada satu mask of either shame ataupun sexualized or objectifying issues so 
It's not that our boys don't know about menstruation. They learn it. But they learn it through interaction. Interaction of us hiding it ataupun benda tu dikotorkan ataupun dibalukan. So, we have boys who ejek girls about their period. Eh, ada bocor kat sekolah kan? Uh, they laugh about it. Then there's another side. They're not all boys are like that. Some boys, they're not comfortable about it. Ataupun dia malu, but they're not taught that there is an alternative narrative that you are supposed to know or learn and what you're supposed to do in situations like that. So we have males who might not be okay with their friends doing that, but they don't know what they're supposed to do sebab they're not taught to even talk about it. It's not your space. You don't get to say anything about this. So even when your friends are making fun of girls, you tak boleh. So we need to make sure that we bring boys who turn into men who turn into husbands and fathers, who turn into leaders, policy makers, researchers to understand and know that they can talk about it in a respectful, in a way that is healthy so that they can also support half of the other population who go through menstruation on a monthly basis. So that needs to be clarified first so that we can have this kind of conversations without the taboo of shame tak ada, shame tak ada, kita tak ada issue of sexualization because we're talking about a normal biological process that half the population goes through. So once we can get comfortable with that, then we can think about, okay, what is menstruation? Okay, what do we need to know? What do women and girls need when they menstruate? And if they don't have access to this, what happens to them? So essentially, girls and women need access to the product. So but everybody wants to talk about the product, and okay? Yes, product. Period is something that women and girls need. So product can come in many forms. It could be in Malaysia, the most widely used product is a disposable sanitary pad too. Can, but there are also alternatives that are maybe uh, more environmental friendly or more economically um, sustainable, like uh, other options. Uh, so there's also like, uh, cloth pads, menstrual cups. But also in this area, I want to highlight also another um, uh, one of the issues that we have because we don't talk about periods. We are not also very innovative with the products. Again, product periods are merger. Even though actually the market is big, but nobody wants to design more innovative ways of managing periods. So we don't have you know creativity put into that. And then we also need uh, what we call wash facilities. Wash facilities need access to clean water, toilet, disposal management. Right? If you use a product that needs to be disposed, you have to make sure that there is a place for them to dispose it. If you use a product that requires a lot of water to clean, then you need to make sure that you have access to water. So, contohnya, um, we are very generous population. Cepat je nak bagi pad kat everyone when we find out about issues of period poverty. So, we send out sanitary pads to islands, contohnya, where they don't have disposal management. So, the next time we come, Kita dah nampak lah pet dah terapung-rapung dah because we do, they cannot dispose of it, right? There's no disposal management. So we have to think about that as well. Tak ada toilet, tak ada clean water. And then education about menstruation. And this is really important. All of these things, they they come back together again. When we talk about issues of child marriage ataupun viral issues yang macam pilih untuk mengandung daripada uruskan hide kan. So we have to understand the whole context of it. The other one is education. Education, it doesn't just affect the people who are in poverty. Whether or not our girls and women know about the menstrual cycle, their reproductive health. How do they, do they know how to calculate their menstrual cycle? Whether that menstrual cycle is normal ataupun tak normal. What is happening to their body? Kadang-kadang tak tahu pun kenapa datang period. In some context, still think that it's a curse. Uh, some kids are still kena marah dengan mak ayah sebab datang period awal lah. Dia, dia period dah start at 9 years old, uh, their parents are angry at them. Sebab now I have to buy you pet, tu you tak payah je lah pergi sekolah, you just stay at home, kan? Uh, don't, don't menyusahkan pula. Uh, but it's not a choice, kan? When period comes. So, the education about menstruation too is really important as well. That also has to do with when women are married women, they still don't understand the menstrual cycle too. Sometimes uh, they choose to, uh, it's not that they choose to get pregnant, it's just because of lack of knowledge, they get pregnant because they don't know when things happen. Can, uh, so it's a, it's a whole um, understanding of the reproductive health that is equally important. And then we also have access to timely um, apa ni, medical care. If they need help, do they know where to go? Can they get help? Contohnya, if they, there's something wrong, they have excess pain, 
this is also affecting women who are not necessarily in poverty lah. Tak tahu senggugut kan, culturally we think, oh it's normal, senggugut tu biasa. But we don't know that actually we're not supposed to get help, we're supposed to ask for help and go to uh, medical doctors to get help. Tapi tak tahu that information. But if kita tahu, boleh tak kita dapatkan? Can the girls get somebody to take them to the clinic? Can the women go to the clinic? How far is the clinic from them? What, the, what, is, what are the impacts of them going to the clinic? Kan kalau kita fikir, okay lah, I'll take the day off to go to clinic. I'll just tell my boss, I nak pergi clinic. Ataupun, I arrange my own schedule. <coughs> Tapi, if I work on the shifts, can I just go to the clinic? What happens? If I if my time is my money, kan, macam mana saya nak pergi clinic? I'm losing half the day to travel to the clinic just to check on something that I think is small or something that nobody wants to know because it's period. Macam, it's women issue minor. Tak pergi pun clinic, kan? Sebab tak check, so it's considered as not an important issue. So, tak ada, don't get access to timely medical um, care ataupun attention. And then, we also have dignity. Uh, the issue of dignity ni is quite tricky lah kan. Tapi sebenarnya, we can easily um, uh, empathize and reflect upon how it affects us. Especially women lah, I know about all the women here nodding at me like, yes, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Uh, kan? Tapi the issue of dignity ni is that we are meant to be dignified people. Again, whether we are people in poverty, whether we are people who live a certain in a certain social class, human beings are meant to be dignified. So sometimes we lose our dignity because it's challenged by others. So kiranya kita ada period, it's normal for women to have period, but our period is being shamed on us. Malu sebab ni, malu sebab tu. There's so many things that were taught to malu about the very normal part aspects of our period. So the issue of dignity ni kadang-kadang has to do with malu. Sometimes it's because it challenges the spaces that we're allowed to go in ataupun the positions we're allowed to take. Kan? Maybe in in apa more uh, higher ataupun global context ni, kita talk about female leadership often question because women are the period, so they're not emotionally stable, so tak boleh jadi leader. Kan? Always used against us. Kan? Um, uh, the menstrual cycle, contohnya. Ataupun, sometimes, culturally, we have examples where women in their menstruation are not allowed into certain spaces. Ataupun, tak allowed to cook food, macam tu. So, they are considered as dirty. So, the idea that menstruation is dirty also touches on um, that issue of dignity. So, we have to think about that in a holistic way. So, I want to bagi contoh lah yang mungkin kita selalu dengar ataupun selalu isu selalu viral and why we need to pay a bit more attention and be a little bit more critical satu isu tentang uh, pilih mengandung daripada uruskan haid uh, so when we um, ask about these issues can because we've heard about it uh, when, bila kita jalankan kajian my uh, original research started out in the urban areas sebab um, it came about from my interest in urban poverty lah uh, so, I wanted to look at children and urban poverty. I wanted to look at the impact of period poverty. When I started out, I also wanted to focus on the issue of menstrual hygiene. Just the focus of hygiene. Ada tak produk, boleh tak uruskan haid dengan baik for young girls. And then I realised, oh, okay. Most girls think they have pets. So, they think they have enough. Tapi, the young girls in the urban area, they actually don't have enough. Tapi dia tak tahu. Sebab dia tak tahu pun, oh, I'm supposed to change the pet. Uh, so, Mak cakap jimat pun dia jelas satu sehari. Tak ada darah tak banyak pun. Can, uh, don't waste. So, I just use one. Ataupun, they can uh, comically macam, just say, oh, tak ada. Kalau Mak beli uh, macam, sebulan dia akan beli satu paket besar. Lepas tu, siapa dapat, dapat lah. Siapa tak dapat, pisang. Uh, macam tu. They just, they, they don't think that it's a problem because it was never, uh, talk to them as a problem. So, kalau tak ada, buat apa? Uh, tak pergi sekolah lah hari tu. Uh, kalau cikgu bagi, bagi. But they, they, it's not a problem for them. It's not something that they think is kesiannya saya, so tak dapat pergi sekolah, kan? So, it's not uh, the picture of poverty that kadang-kadang we want to see, right? Kadang-kadang we are taught to understand the sensationalized idea of what poverty should look should look like. So, kita nak nampak gambar yang macam dia pakai baju kuat koyak, lepas tu dia macam sedih, saya rasa tak ada pet kan. But we have to humanize people and understand that they're human beings. And condition sometimes uh, teaches them to choose certain things. Sama juga macam people ask, kenapa um, ayah dia boleh beli rokok tapi dia tak belikan dia pet? Kan? And they don't they don't ask for the pet because they were never taught to know that they're supposed to change it a lot of times that they, they deserve to get 
sanitary pads enough so that they can go to school contohnya so that they can manage it with with dignity kan tapi tak ada contohnya nobody talks about that because they don't know that so cerita mengandung ni lah so what we what we did was we ask um, because uh, a lot of these issues came up during uh, PKP kan so I didn't personally go down to the ground so we had our uh, enumerators and our friends NGO friends uh, in Sabah to try to identify what were the issues lah um, and then uh, they said well if I have kids kalau saya pilih untuk beranak everybody celebrates me but if I choose to you know when you have children everybody's happy for you right Macam, oh it's good that you have more kids especially in the rural areas again uh, and then but if instead of managing period on a monthly basis right asking to buy sanitary pads for something that people don't think is worth ataupun food can nak beli food kena beli pad nak buy enjoyable things or nak buy pad contohnya they have one ringgit nak beli jajan ke nak beli pad they choose to buy snacks because it's more enjoyable it's more rewarding they didn't see the value of that to go to school not to go so so it's a, it's a very systemic punya problem right to understand the problem as a system not just exclusive to period tak ada pad and that is uh, kan to terus buat the conclusion that sebab dia tak ada pad therefore dia pilih untuk mengandung but they also don't know so sama juga at the same time they feel bad to say no to their husbands when their husbands want to have intimate relations so it's not that they it's not simple bukan simple tak ada pad terus mengandung banyak kali right so we have to also um, think about the larger context and how they live their day to day life and that how that affects them sama juga macam girls yang datang period lepas tu um, to buy pad or to go to school can to make that to parents choose to keep the idah besar dah can uh, i think most malay ataupun malaysian girls uh, hear this once you get your period dalam script tu of the conversation will have dah besar dah can it's as though yesterday you kecil today because your period arrive you terus besar can so that there is a very um that's uh, kita panggil a rite of passage can for um malaysian ataupun malay in particular can we think that when you get your period you dah besar so suddenly there is this um responsibility so we did this research with young girls can dia pun tak faham so they said that they all of them mentioned that their moms will tell them dah besar dah so now they suddenly feel this burden to i have to be more responsible i have to do more things i have to you know save face of my family jaga air keluarga there's a lot more responsibility on me right so this is when girls suddenly have this responsibility that's put on them socially to be more so the same concept the parents have on them thinking that okay dah besar dah they might be ready to start a family they might be ready to to marry so walaupun perhaps people who are more educated people who are more in the urban area the concept doesn't float kan kita tak suddenly rasa memang kita akan cakap contohnya anak kita dah besar tapi kita tak ada rasa macam okey boleh kahwin dah kan but sometimes we say it we do say it right you can hear you can hear the voices of your aunties ke kan kakak-kakak ke mak cik yang suka cakap nah dah boleh kahwin dah ni kalau tak belajar rajin-rajin nanti kena kahwin kan we have these concepts that are very um very macam familiar tapi we never question them kita macam it's a joke lah it's just a joke kan but for a lot of people it's not a joke kan it's serious so we have to also be critical about these issues so i think the point is number one is to um acknowledge that the conversation around period and menstruation has always been something that we conceal not just for people in poverty not just for children not just for you know people in serious situations can we incorporate kita tak boleh cakap pasal menstruation kau is a dirty uh, topic kan contohnya lah uh, in policy making we cannot talk about period that's such a like benda geli-geli lah nak cakap kan it's not serious enough for uh, policy issues macam tu contohnya so we need to acknowledge that so that we have awareness of that kan um, and then we can recognize that eh um how did we keep this secret and this apa ni uh, issue quiet for so long when it's happening to half of us kan it's really once you start thinking about it you akan macam you jam sekejap so you macam oh how did we do it how did we manage to keep it so quiet and unknown for so long but it affects people in so many serious ways 
The second thing is to remember to recognize that things that happen to people are happening to people. Maksudnya, they are still human beings with a constellation of a relationship, with a constellation of uh, things that are impacting them, institutions, uh, economic institutions, uh, financial institutions, ataupun education institutions, religious institutions, all of these things, culture ni semua, still affects them. So, they're still human beings. Even though they might be different from who we are, they're still that. And then, they have different identities. Contohnya, kita um, as a person, we carry different identities that affects us in different ways. Uh, the academic term, kita panggil intersectionality. Kan? Contohnya, uh, I'm female. Uh, I'm in my 30s. I am uh, Malay. Um, I'm middle class, contohnya. I'm educated. All of these identities affect me differently from another female who might be also mid-30s, Malaysian, but not Malay, contohnya. Ataupun living in rural areas, different from me, but also female who are in mid-30s. Unfortunately, bila kita tengok reports ni, sometimes we tend to lump people up together. Can okay? No offense to people who do quantitative work, but we... <laughs> But we don't tell stories that, you know, differentiate that people are different sometimes and their needs are different and their experiences are different and this affects their life, can? Uh, who their parents are. Especially children. Children ni, dia punya vulnerability dia tu extra sikit. Sebab dia depend on dia punya parent not only for financial resources, not only for shelter but also socialization that builds their internal structure. So that means what they know and what they understand and how they see the world is very much affected by their socialization. It could be their parents, it could be their caregivers, it could be their surrounding. So they will vulnerability to lebih. And they might not recognize as much the issues that they experience. So they might not look like what we think they should look like. Bila kita fikir orang susah, kita nak tengok dia ada gambaran susah tu, kan? That is for our own consumption. It doesn't benefit them. They might not look the way that we want them to look, but they might still experience vulnerabilities that we do not see because of our own our own biases that we have. So kita tak nampak sebab kita nampak dia macam dia ada iPhone je, dia ada Astro je kat rumah dia, kan? I remember one time um, pergi buat research kat PPR Lepas tu I macam tersentap sikit Sebab uh, Before I started the conversation Kakak tu terus uh, Explain herself Doktor saya uh, ada astro ni sebab uh, Sebenarnya uh, she had to explain Every single item that she had in her house To explain herself So that I don't think that she's You know telling the wrong story So that's I feel like Imagine if we live our life like that you know, for people to show kindness to us, we have to explain, oh, saya pakai baju ni, saya beli kat sini, ada orang bagi bukan guna duit saya, saya tak curi duit kerajaan. I said, you know, imagine having to do that, that we, we strip people of their dignity. Kita tak, we don't expect, you know, we don't accept them as human beings. Kita require them to explain themselves all the time. So we, we shouldn't, we should change the narrative a little bit. Kadang-kadang, uh, you know, um, pictures sells, kan? Um, you know, um, benda tu is very sensational. Tapi kita lupa that, you know, we don't have to um, show a very typical idea of uh, what what poverty should look like or what we think poverty should look like. But for people to start thinking of other human beings as human so that empathy tu kita grow. That we can see that orang sebelah rumah kita, walaupun dia okay, uh, uh, dia nampak macam dia okay tapi sebenarnya kita boleh take a moment to you know to reach out to them and connect to them at the human level to notice that sebenarnya dia tak okay kan uh, just like especially during the pandemic ni kita nampak a lot of more people who used to be okay but then they're not okay now so they're affected in different ways so I think maybe just to start off that conversation that way I hope I haven't taken more time Terima kasih banyak Dr. Fatimah saya kira that is something uh, very eye-opening dan bila Dr. cerita tadi terus kita teringat ini uh, seperti mana ibu-ibu yang pergi ke kiri dan buku pink di depan kan eh? Abang Foundation untuk semua family yang dijaga buat manusia dan buku pink ni buku catatan perkembangan whereby kita track every expenditure setiap bulan and then ada beberapa aspek tentang anak-anak 
sekitar punya mental health Bila sebab tersebut tu saya teringat sebab Najah, contohnya Najah ada lead uh, project management So dia track every expenditure Setiap bulan kita bagi monthly allowance Kepada ibu, sebab dalam kadang-kadang kata bagi ibu lebih efektif Daripada bagi kepada ayah So kita memang intentionally bagi kepada ibu Tak kita saya, saya ingat saya tak pernah ada lagi uh, Sanitary pack dalam expenditure mereka Even most of the time, bila dia nak prioritize Dia akan prioritize rumah dulu, makanan tu last So kita dengan bagi duit tu, kita punya aim nak suruh mereka makan better To buy those hygiene products and whatnot Tapi lepas tu and half years kita track expenditure mereka Tidak ada uh, those kind of products So it's actually an insight yang macam kita rasa So how actually they manage Dan saya teringat juga bila Dr. Fatimah sebut Bila uh, kelangan di satu period, orang yang sangat besar dah uh, Kalau dalam Indian culture Even Indian Muslim atau di Indonesia Kalau anak itu datang sini, dia akan ada satu majlis besar Dia selamat atau tahlil <laughs> Untuk announce to the world There is a lady ready to be married Oh, I see So, that's the Dan kalau mereka uh, sedang period, dia orang tak akan boleh tidur dalam rumah Ini di India lah, di Malaysia tak ada Tapi dia akan tidur kat luar Exactly macam dalam cerita pack mereka uh, So, that is something yang very really eye opening dan aspek kekayaan tadi, memang experience kita tak tahu dah berapa ratus rumah Sebab apa Malaysia bila pergi, kita akan duduk an hour, an hour plus So, we go deep into dia Sometimes saya pun rasa terganggu macam ni Dia ada smart TV, aku pun tak ada smart TV <laughs> Tapi of course, they, they will explain a lot Kalau ini orang bagi, this and that And sometimes, dia pakai cincin So, kita, sometimes kita expect, dia tak sepatutnya ada barang kemas pun Kalau dia ni sikit lah So, sometimes ada ibu yang explain, ini sebenarnya cincin tinggalan arwah suami dia So this is the only thing yang dia memberi, dia tak akan jual, whatever it is So then, then bila kita dengar, kita faham So memang ada demand dekat media, social media Nak tengok orang yang sometimes kita call porn, property, uh, property porn tu kan Nak tunjukkan dia orang foto, muka berlalat Dan baru kita rasa macam ada orang susah Kalau dia nampak dua, sampai abang macam bos gambar nampak macam pakai baju Mereka hidup je, orang kata, memang susah kan So uh, it's something yang really uh, real and really real Baik, thank you Dr. Fatimah. I think ramai orang ada soalan dan insight saya nak tanya lebih dalam selepas ini, insyaAllah. So, saya nak pergi ke Dr. Muhammad Khalid. 2018, uh, waktu Arwah Foundation itu berkat, uh, I was tasked to, to find a project macam mana kita nak begin to deal with issues children from the Indonesia. So, kebetulan pada tahun itu keluar uh, Children Without. So, kita baca-baca tu. First time saya dengar pasal Stuttonness. First time saya dengar pasal all those issues yang mesti kita dalam space, tak ada space dan sebagainya 97% orang tak beli makanan sihat sebab makanan mahal And then bila baca recommendation tu, nombor satu dia tulis breastfeed So I went to Dr. Ladi, dia cakap, orang susah ni beli kena breastfeed, tak ada lagi So we thought, isu dia adalah mungkin diorang kena pergi kerja sebab ada ibu-ibu kita jumpa Hari kedua sebab orang bersalin, dia dah pergi berniaga kat pasal malam Dia tak boleh take that break Satu hari cuti maksudnya, income takkan cukup untuk meet the ends So kita fikir mungkin dia perlukan storage dan peralatan untuk pump susu Rupanya bila pergi, bukan waktu isu ni Daripada lahir lagi memang kebanyakan Even depan mata kita dia bancung susu pekat manis Dengan air ataupun sirap Itu dia bagi kat newborn dulu So ibu dia kita macam apa? Ke buat apa ni kan? So bila kita beritahu tak boleh kat ini bahaya dan Bagaimana tak anak saya lagi sehat minum ni Hari ini besar Tapi eventually dia jadi terbantut lah So kita pergi dengan klinik, so kita first project kita buat tu, projek susu ibu Kita matchkan uh, counselors, uh, lactation counselors dengan mothers Sebelum bertalian jumpa, and then track baby tu sampai one year old Make sure ukur dia itu paling tinggi dan berat, tak terbantu And then pandemik datang, klinik dah tak boleh masuk So we do it differently sekarang Dekat negeri Kelantan dan juga sekarang nak pergi ke negeri Perak Lepas tu kita baca pula family on the edge That happens in dalam tempoh pandemik So we try many things, bagi monthly allowance and then sekarang ni bila budak-budak tu tak ada gadget buat belajar, kita bagi gadget Tapi lepas kita dapat dia orang sebenarnya tak interest dah dengan sekolah ni They just like don't see sekolah tu as a social mobility punya lebih ni And most of them 15 years old dah, dah fikir untuk meniaga Dan bila kita bagi justification, kita boleh support so you can go to higher education Dia kata no, sebenarnya itu akan lebih costly, dia akan hutang, lepas habis belajar tak boleh bayar So dia kata Mereka intelligent mind this board Now we should stop and work So, data yang kita baca itu semua Most of it adalah pre-pandemic So sekarang dah, kita dah masuk uh, Pasal yang 
seterusnya tapi dari kita kita lihat bagaimana orang lain abuse among children pun makin tinggi semalam pun tak ada statistik seperti itu kan so how actually kita nak kena faham dalam konteks Malaysia hari ini so ini adalah generasi yang sudah ada masalah tak boleh menulis dan membaca mesti nak belajar di sekolah and nutrition wise memang sangat betul uh, kita boleh tengok sebab kita track what they eat dia, dia orang kena cerita hari ini masak apa so setiap pagi kemayangnya tak sarapan dan dia pergi sekolah tak sarapan sekolah cuti tak ada makanan So those kind of things yang kita tengah cari apa lagi solution yang kita boleh buat yang sebenarnya workable If all of these are workable then I, I think it may be too to the other one So we need some insights what is happening right now pre and post pandemic and bagaimana cara kita nak uh, initiate something yang lebih ground breaking untuk bantu uh, anak-anak Malaysia Silakan so, Terima kasih Saudara Azlan Pertama sekali uh, Assalamualaikum selamat pagi Uh, terima kasih atas uh, jemputan uh, besar hati di sini bersama dengan uh, panel yang apa, uh, satu lagi daripada UIA mungkin uh, soalan yang saudara Azlan tanya apa situasi sekarang sebelum COVID dan selepas COVID kita banyak dengar uh, I speak in English or Amdeh? doesn't matter okay, kita banyak dengar uh, ekonomi sudah recover Uh, semua dah ok interest rate pun naik uh, orang banyak berbelanja saya dah ada jihad komiti tu dah berjaya but realitinya berbeza di Amerika dia tak tengok ekonomi tu baik tak baik berdasarkan GDP dia tengok berapa banyak orang ada kerja beza dengan sebelum pandemik kalau kita hanya gunakan indikator itu berapa ramai yang hilang tak ada kerja sebelum pandemik dan beberapa ramai yang tak ada kerja selepas pandemik kalau kita nak kata ekonomi berkembang sudah recover jumlah sekarang mesti lebih rendah daripada jumlah sebelum tapi jumlah orang yang hilang yang tiada kerja sebelum pandemik dengan sekarang yang tak ada kerja lah ni 20% lagi tinggi sebelum pandemik so it's not 5% not 10% not 11% not 2% 20% ekonomi belum lagi recover ha? So kalau duduk dengar ekonomi recover Menteri cakap ke, jihad cakap ke Siapa cakap kita hold on Recover untuk siapa? Ha? Adakah untuk rakyat yang Keluarga Malaysia ni kita Ataupun untuk segelintir Jawapan dia hanyalah untuk segelintir Because it's not yet uh, Recovered Just take one indicator on jobs Jobs not yet recovered Wages, recovered tak recovered Not yet Uh, recovered graduan yang keluar kerja kadang graduan kerja ke, yang keluar dari universiti atau apa nama college 37% kerja yang pekerjaan yang tidak memerlukan degree kita banyak dulu dengar ah ha, ajar rider and income lagi tinggi it is a rational choice so we are not yet uh, recovered overall economy not yet recovered how about coming to the future in relations to children ah ha? Malaysia is going to become aging nation aging nation banyak lagi orang tua peratus jum, bukan hanya peratus sana jumlah kanak-kanak di Malaysia makin berkurang tu sudah 9.3 million now 9.2 million ya? makin lama makin berkurang budak-budak dah kurang bukan peratus sana jumlah kanak-kanak di Malaysia memang sudah uh, berkurang because fertility rate has come come down ya? orang nak kata Melayu miskin bersih anak ramai tak betul average Melayu ada anak 2.3 tu Chinese one kalau kat Penang Chinese less than one 0.8 di Penang Melayu pun less than two so overall is about two even lost cost flat bila we kota anak ramai tak average two i think about 6% more than uh, six, uh, five kids orang Melayu tak ramai anak average dua and ni isu global lah you are me excluding uh, Saharan African even poor countries number of children is low the number of children in Scandinavian countries is the same number of children in Bangladesh Christian and Muslim is the same it's not an issue of kaya miskin not issue of religion overall has been coming down because people are more educated uh, overall uh, people are more educated more income women in the labor force so anak memang uh, kurang So kita fertility rate uh, apa nama decreasing anak uh, kurang become aging 
and the speed of aging dari negara tua di Malaysia begitu pantas it takes France about 115 years to become aging it's going to take Malaysia about 30 years in fact the speed of aging in Malaysia faster than the speed of slightly faster speed of aging in Japan di Japan semua orang tua kita banyak dah ke arah ketuaan yang begitu pantas bermaksud dalam satu generasi sebelum kita jadi tua tua dia kata 15% daripada penduduk umur 60-65 ke atas tua kita in about, in about 20-30 lah super age bila my 20% so probably another one uh, generation although some states Penang, Perak dah tua tapi Perak banyak orang uh, tua compare negeri-negeri lain so bila orang tua dia tak kerja dia tak spend ekonomi tak berkembang yang ber, bekerja yang spend orang labor force lah workforce kita lah bermaksud in one generation you need workforce who are more productive who are more healthy which means based on kanak-kanak sekarang kanak-kanak umur 5 tahun yang katakan stunted sekarang eh. in 12 years when we aging they already should be in labor force half will be in labor force setengah tak masuk universiti setengah continue so you need some kids who are kalau kita cakap kanak-kanak menjadi penjana ekonomi eh, then we need them to be healthy the problem is they are not healthy which means not long term eh, bukan nak azah 100 tahun in one generation we're going to have a problem we already have a problem now we're going to have a problem later and covid make it uh, worse because for lack of better word the intervention that was done lembab nak kata ngok memang ngok lah tapi lembab very stingy don't want to spend on children I explain why why do you say this eh? maybe they don't see the impact of pandemic to low income people or even average Malaysia before pandemic kanak-kanak yang hidup dalam tinggal dalam keluarga yang miskin about 8.8.4% uh, 8.4% is not a small number it's about 1.3 million kids it's still a sizable number about 14% lah huh? about 14% of kanak-kanak di Malaysia lepas pandemik daripada 14% naik kepada 20% jadi 1 daripada 5 kanak-kanak di Malaysia hidup dalam isi rumah yang miskin itu bukan number yang kecil 1 per 5 bermaksud if you're not taking care of this 20% daripada given the capacity in one generation going to be gone so they're not going to be productive so the number of children who are poor after pandemik has increase di mana ada increase bukan negeri-negeri kaya negeri yang dah miskin di Sabah contohnya negeri yang begitu kaya gas kita duk guna gas mai daripada Sabah minyak mai daripada Sarawak tapi negeri negeri kaya rakyat dia miskin di Sabah sebelum pandemik satu uh, about 20% below poverty line lepas pandemik 25% uh, di Sabah di Kelantan daripada 10% naik 20% di Terengganu di Pahang the rate double and fertility apa nama number of kanak-kanak di situ lebih sikit berbanding negeri-negeri lain so yang orang Melayu kita dah jatuh di timba tangga berlaku di negeri negeri yang uh, miskin so you see the gap nanti and development gap inequality gap going to become wider so children number of children who are poor has uh, increased uh, after covid also has increased and mostly in poor states macam negeri-negeri Melayu ni lah but poverty bukan hanya daripada segi pendapatan bukan hidup daripada bapak-bapak yang miskin tadi uh, profesor pun cakap uh, pet poverty huh? period uh, poverty which is, uh, is a very serious issue we we'll commend uh, her for working on this you look also poverty in multidimensional especially in health and in terms of education in terms of health we talk about stunting nothing to be proud of global stunting has been declining around the world has been declining kita punya GDP dah double in two decades but kita punya child stunting has been going up it doesn't make any sense kalau negeri makin kaya kanak-kanak lebih baik betul tak? tapi negeri makin kaya kanak-kanak lagi 
So 20 uh, percent stunted is a huge number, 20 percent. Satu lima miskin, satu lima tak sihat. And there's a cost. I remember I think bulan Julai, MOH, KJ panggil. Dia tanya satu question. What is the economic cost of stunting? Only have one question. Our response to that, I said the cost of stunting is much higher than the cost of prevention. Much higher. There is economic benefit to address this. Sometimes putra dia tak tengok. Oh, I spend bagi makan tu. What's the return? Jangan ada fikir return lah. Return budak-budak ni okey lah. But you convince them with economic return. The economic return is much higher. Why economic return much higher? If the kid is not healthy workers, wages is lower. Productivity is lower. So you make sure they are productive, they are healthy, wages is increased. Increase in wages means spending. Beli, dia beli kopi. Kopi, dia beli bayar supplier apa? Kopi ke? Bayar elektrik ke? Government would make money, would collect more tax. So there's economic benefit. So anyway, our stunting has been uh, going down in terms of health and not just stunting eh? obesity and overweight is also a serious issue in Malaysia New York Times 2018 or 2019 front page the fattest country in Asia Mungkadipan Malaysia so it's not an issue of stunting the issue of also uh, non-communicable uh, disease so that's health bila you tak sehat you're not going to do well in education with the Unku Aziz, one of the greatest thinker Malaysia ever produced, they kata, to make sure the children do well in school, make sure stomach is filled. Mereka bagi makan. Dia kata makan, bagi makan telur kan setiap pagi. So you take care of the stomach first. And to take care of the stomach, you take care of the mother. If you take care of the mother, the child will do uh, better. So in terms of health, we're not doing well at all. And it's not issue of negeri miskin eh? even though you tengok dekat uh, Kelantan uh, contohnya one, satu berapa tiga bukan hanya isu stunting bukan isu apa nama uh, makan tak sihat persekitaran pun uh, penting ayam kotong tempat kotong children not going to do well it plays an important role or the factor of stunting and stunt we told the, the minister stunting in Malaysia is a crisis we're not doing well at all. Ghana better than us. Palestine under occupation better than us, the children. Why are we not uh, better? Were we not better? We were. Kita punya health system in Malaysia is extremely good. Yeah? Contohnya, under five mortality or infant mortality. Before independence, is one of the worst. Now it's comparable to OECD countries, comparable rich countries. Macam orang tiba saya bidai-bidai masuk, klinik kesihatan ada. Now I think 90% of Malaysian live within 5 kilometers of public health care. So it's very good. You beranak, you register a klinik uh, kesihatan, setiap minggu dia dimai. Dimai check. Uh, so it's extremely uh, good. But then lepas 2 bulan, dia patut dah tak follow up lah. Hmm? Then stunting happens. So stunting health, we know our kids not healthy after COVID is worse. And the impact to that, the pandemic impact is what you said earlier. Education. 40% are not interested to study. And it's a rational decision. When we did our study, pet ni, bukan pet, sanitary pet, pet, phone ni, bukan semua dah phone. Pet, dia pakai phone. And bila dia nak dua, tiga, class same time, how are you going to use? The father need the phone. Pergi kerja. Tak belajar. Lah. Lepas tak belajar, tiga, empat, pergi, pergi mampu. Ya. Dia pergi tolong mak bapak dia. Is it his fault? Lah? It's our fault lah data kena bayang kena cari pet so he lost interest and the parents told us nak buka sekolah ni is costly I said in what way nak beli ni mas tak boleh nak tukang sari tukang sekali cannot afford so it's a cost budak-budak not uh, uh, interested this is after covid eh? before covid we already have issues in education globally apa nama uh, SDG UN kata primary school kids should know how to read. In Malaysia, about 38% late primary school can is not proficient in reading. This pre-COVID. Post-COVID going to get much worse. So in terms of income, in terms of education, in terms of health, we are not doing well. We did extremely well 
in other matters, in life expectancy, after independence until 2000, for instance, we increased our life by 20 years. Semua hidup lama. In the infant mortality, one of the best in the world, uh, I, I would say that. Under five mortality, one of the best in the world. Dulu daripada 100 orang budak-budak yang celebrate uh, fifth birthday, 100 orang mungkin 8 meninggal. Ini daripada 100 orang, less than one meninggal. It's a tremendous achievement by Malaysian government because we spend on health. Now that's not happening. And this the impact that we will see uh, uh, in the future. Especially in worst state. There's a study done by Sabah, uh, one of the Sabah think tank. They want to know the internet uh, adoption. They tell a simple question. How many of you know how to attach a file to an email? 40% say I cannot, I do not know. Attach file to an email. This is in Sabah. And it's not primary school, huh? secondary school. Huh? 40%. So we will have an issue on child in our labor force in the future, our economic uh, spending in the future. And this is an issue because we do not have a social pension. Lepas EPF boleh berkelok bawa uri kan? I think one of the worst decision ever by Malaysian government since independence is to allow withdrawal from EPF. Saya cakap orang bantai saya. Kita boleh lah ada duit. Kami tak ada duit. No. You should not take out from your money. Government should give. That's your retirement. Because you borrow less than 20% ada cukup untuk retirement. And cukup in retirement, I put it in general sense. Ada minimum seribu sebulan untuk hidup. Lebih kurang 20% Malaysia nak retire tak? Dulu okey, pasal anak-anak tolong. Tanya anak-anak rejam tak ada. Apa kalau ada gaji pun ciput. So you gonna have a double problem. You not have enough for yourself. And I'm not talking about three generation, next generation. And old age, kita cakap child poverty, old age poverty is happening right now. Anak-anak boleh, tak boleh sponsor. So economy not gonna grow. So, orang nak beli kopi akan berkurangan. Jadi nak sewa bangunan akan berkurangan. What the government has done? Kalau kita cakap about child poverty, banyak sebenarnya. Total social assistance program, ha, lebih kurang 140. Banyak. Setiap ministry akan ada DBKL pun ada MOE, MOH Segala so, tok nenek mesti ada uh, Assistant program At the federal level Campok state level You tambah Probably about 200 Campok zakat lagi Lagi Banyak Social assistance It's a lot In Malaysia The majority for children uh, Is bantuan keluarga Malaysia Dulu BRIM Jadi BSH Zaman Mohidin jadi apa Tak tahu Zaman Ah, Perhatian Zaman uh, Maya Sabri Dia panggil Bantuan Keluarga Malaysia BKM There's a slight change Between Najib punya Lain dia masuk jail lah Pada muka dia Yang uh, Zaman BSH Dia bagi Below 2,500 Dia bagi cash Kepada family Zaman BH Slight difference They take a number of children If you have Number of children more than two additional enam puluh ringgit sebulan. So you want to help the children. So it adjusts for number of children rather than blanket. Dulu dia tak kira number of children. You ada anak dua ke anak sepuluh ke tak ada anak you get the same amount. 2018 it adjusts for the number of children. Now uh, kerajaan bagi kalau bawah dua ribu lima ratus dua anak enam puluh ringgit sebulan untuk seorang anak. Which is good. That's a big one. The second one is bantuan kanak-kanak by JKM untuk orang uh, miskin dia bagi 200 uh, per children a lot so government bagi MOH MOF bagi M, uh, Jabatan Kebajikan Masyarakat under RINA bagi and Ministry of Education pun bagi dari segi dia, dia bagi apa? bantuan makanan sekolah rancangan makanan tambahan uh, sekolah uh, dia bagi ya Ministry of Health pun bagi dia bagi uh, acid apa uh, bagi fosilic acid dia bagi to the uh, parents dengan uh, susu what's the problem we spend a lot on this government spend a lot on this banyak bi bantuan keluarga bantuan makanan dan juga tadi saya kata satu lagi bantuan kanak-kanak is this enough the problem is the coverage is very small Bantuan kanak-kanak Daripada B10 The lowest 
B10 yang dapat bukan semua 25% hanya dapat not all dapat di antara B10 di kalangan keluarga yang miskin berapa ramai keluarga miskin yang kata satu keluarga yang miskin berapa ramai yang dapat bantuan kanak-kanak 8% bukan semua di bawah 100 yang miskin kanak-kanak hanya 8 yang dapat daripada 100 kanak-kanak di Malaysia berapa ramai dapat bantuan kanak-kanak tadi saya beritahu ingat 20% keluarga miskin kan daripada 100 kanak-kanak kanak di Malaysia berapa ramai yang dapat bantuan uh, bantuan kanak-kanak JK eh? 1% daripada 100 kanak-kanak hanya seorang akan dapat oh ketika ini dapat bantuan so walaupun bantuan ada the condition is very stringent and the outreach is quite poor ok memang B10 the lowest 25% saja dapat it should be all so is is it an issue then we can discuss proposal eh? our proposal breakfast bagi uh, dekat semua 1000 days uh, you bagi and you extend bantuan kanak-kanak B40 and 40 pun you bagi then the question that gonna be posed is that ada duit tak? memang ada duit simple lah huh? now subsidi 80 bilion terima kasih kepada pasukan jihad kita 80 uh, bilion 50 bilion adalah price subsidi petrol subsidi electricity subsidi Uh, ayam uh, subsidi dulu uh, apa nama uh, 800 million or 1 billion sekerbuk lemak semua sekali ni 50 billion another 30 billion is income transfer bantuan keluarga JKM yang saya sebut ni sekerbuk lemak 30 billion 50 campur 30 80 ok daripada 50 billion siapa orang tu not that kid not this kid bisa seorang daripada 10 uh, 100 dapat not among the kid in the poor saya 8% saja dapat ya dapat you dapat I dapat you dapat dalam bilik ni dapat because bulk of it petrol subsidy you are miskin you naik basikal you naik motor kecil your subsidy is much less so the issue of reallocation of subsidy we calculated if you remove all subsidies you bagi kat B40 per month dia akan dapat RM1,400 per month you kata you bagi dekat B80 setiap family dapat RM1,700 sebulan bukan setahun it's more than enough reallocation of subsidy it's not the issue of money we have money but we give to the wrong people kita tolak lah duit curi gagal masuk poket sendiri tolak tepi dulu lah yang tu pun belambak juga this year kita spend untuk bayang hutang 1MDB is 15 billion that's hell lot of money 15 billion Nak bagi kau punya 5 bilion bilion berapa? Kosong lah Berapa banyak lah Bajet Kelantan 1 bilion Per year Bajet Kedah 800 bilion Bajet Kelantan Kalau kita tak bayang hutang subsidi apa Hutang 1 bilion <coughs> tahun ni Tak payah bagi duit ke Kelantan Seduit, seduit pun tak payah bagi untuk 15 tahun Jadi ayang dia jadi elok tak Ayang macam kopi ni So there's a lot of cost to this huh? Can we fix it? Easily fix reallocation of the money. Will it be done? It would not be done. Why it would not be done? If you remove subsidy now, you will lose election. They don't care about fiscal. And kids are not voters. So would any drastic changes happen? I very pessimistic. Should we stop talking? We shouldn't. Because this is a powerful group. This is an important pressure group. Must keep on shouting if we want to shout one thing i would suggest we shout everybody get a free breakfast is it a cost it is costly but you can do wang miskin bayang apa free wang kaya you bagi gradual lah you bayang seringgit ke you bayang dua ringgit we disagree with the idea wang miskin makan nasi orang budak-budak lain makan nasi because you segregate the children you you chop the kepala dia dia loser saya kena pergi kutip pergi ambil makanan dekat situ Tak boleh Everybody has to eat together Same food Why you segregate? Kita suka segregate Budak miskin makan nasi Ni petrol subsidi pula nak bagi cut Cut tu kata you loser Why can't you just put cash in their account? Give them dignity Tadi 
Profesor cakap dignity Dignity is important In policy making I have Small chance About two years To be in Putrajaya Some of the discussion Kadang-kadang Lack that element Everything is statistics 8% poverty It's not 8% man 1.3 million kids They have faces They have parents They are somebody's brother Somebody's sister When you humanize it Like what she said And I totally agree what she said uh, During her presentation When you humanize it You give them dignity Maybe the approach to policy Will be slightly different You don't think about Doang it Into a sponsor Udo Ramakan You think this is the right thing to do And In our discussion now we talk about mostly, I think, entirely about Malaysian kids. How about refugee kids? How about stateless kids? We don't talk about them. We're doing a project now for UN, rights-based budgeting. Then we list down, what are the systems that refugee, stateless, undocumented children get from us? You know what they get? Zero. Their kids, they are here. They get zero. The only thing they get before, during pandemic, is chucho free vaccine. The rest, nothing, they're on their own. So are we very caring? Are we not. Are we going to have a bright future? It's not a comfortable thing to say. We're not going to have a bright future. Can we sing? Of course we can. When it only happen if we empathize, ada empathy, kan? Bila tak ada empathy, susah. I think that's first and foremost what we need. Maybe I stop there and we can discuss more. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As always, it's always overwhelming. One of the stories that I found in Sabah, I was able to see that I was able to see that I was able to see that. Saya boleh tahu pada aktivisme sih, anak-anak yang lahir di kawasan undocumented. So, awal-awal dulu, apa pun yang saya key to help them. Tapi after one year, menguruskan sahabat tanpa dokumen yang cukup uh, itu sangat-sangat susah. Jadi banyak konflik yang kita nak kena handle. So kita decide sahabat ni kita at this point of time, kita tak mahu dulu. Tapi antara stories yang kita dapat adalah anak-anak yang lahir di situ tidak diberikan nama selama dua tahun. Sebab most probably anak-anak itu akan mati. So dia tidak ada, dia tak nak ada attachment dengan anak-anak itu. So it's unnamed to be the X, Y, Z kind of stuff. Lebih dua tahun, Kalau dia sebab, and then they will uh, name him or her. And most of them uh, are very wasting in touch cobra. Mm. Makanan paling mewah pun pisah. Mm. Uh, for babies and uh, what not. So, this is Malaysia. So, banyak benda yang fly spot. Uh, even uh, tak ada benda yang saya beri kat awal tu, selain punya susu ibu, adalah bila saya baca doktor dalam report. So, dalam budak tulis, 51% budak-budak tak tak kita nikah. Mm. Uh, so, kita try. Kita memang pergi dan sebenarnya lah tu Bila kita orang pergi PPR dan non-PPR Flat-flat yang buka PPR Sebenarnya flat-flat yang buka PPR jauh lebih teruk Sebab flat PPR Sama ni fix mm. Mm. Tapi pergi ke flat-flat yang yeah. Yang True. tak dapat ruang PPR yeah. 600, 700 And their condition are much worse Correct. Kalau ada anak OKU Kalau ada anak yang ada autis, autism Dan mm. sebagainya memang dikurung dan tak keluar rumah Dan living condition is hell Bila tengok memang tak pergi tadi kan Tadi kan sangat mahal hmm. So kita bawa dia pergi ke sekolah kerajaan Dan daftarkan immediately Cikgu beritahu dalam sistem kota dan penuh Tak boleh buat hmm. So that is kind of limbo Dan bila tengok space dia orang nak bermain Memang tak ada Saya ingat saya buat banyak majlis pemandangan Tanya boleh tak kita kalau break Kita repair all these uh, uh, playgrounds hmm. So playground hasn't there as bahaya Budak-budak tak nak main And they say no there is no such thing like ada working process untuk Mikey dan sebagainya Kalau Mikey pun dia orang akan rusakkan dia hmm. So bila kita orang pergi Kita orang experience sendiri memang tak ada space untuk belajar Memang tak ada Even breastfeeding project mengalami masalah yang sangat besar Sebab tak ada space untuk breastfeed pun hmm. They live three generation Parents uh, Dato' nenek duduk situ Parents anak-anak duduk situ Rumah tu dalam tiga bilik Tapi ada tujuh sembilan orang And Most of them tidur kat hall dan sebagainya So Situasi dia begitu Menurutnya uh, Jadi, uh, of course, talking about problems ni, it can be addictive sometimes and also make us more pessimistic. That people when we talk about solution, there must be something that we can do. And I like to end Dr. Muhammad Khalid's book that wrong ini adalah powerful force. That it will be able to put something to move the society and to what's our ending maybe in another day. 
or to come in cash assistance, uh, we have very difficult time to explain to people why we keep cash. Uh, even corporates and mostly did that push, they are almost not, not agree that we let them go. You want to catch? I, I thought you will be and by you. And did that explain cash will be like you, cost effective, they boost local market, give dignity. But they don't have perception, no, they will miss you. If you do data data for two years, they don't have miss you. Mm -hmm. We track every single expedition. So we want to raise it in the money break that we let them spend the data. The data data. We see the other dignity, the other as a marwa escape into they will spend that on the priority there. So uh, so far other uh many people that are interested in help the video around start the casino cash cash assistance to run other other a lot of trouble. So okay, uh say so maybe when they are done right, uh they can hand up skin maybe I'm a soda I, uh, in five minutes, I can resume and I really want everybody to join in, say something, ask questions, give ideas, input. And then I can begin that session to the end. So, how we can improve and be better. Uh, we have four projects running the uh, scale use of the ecosystem. And of course, there are many challenges you have. And we really want that ideas from all different walks of life and how, how we can do that. So I think we'll be setting up some other sort of way with this uh, uh, culture of Still more than one. See you again. I'm back at noon. Have some bites. You need five minutes or two after you guys can order some bites and whatnot. So I think that it has to be soon, shall we? Okay, uh, so I'm going to say that we're going to have a lot of projects that we're going to have to do. Sudah uh, beberapa tahun ia berjalan dan ada yang baru di-initiate selepas melihat keadaan post pandemik dan sebagainya. Yang pertama tadi saya cerita projek susu ibu. Projek susu ibu ini peringkat awal kita collaborate dengan KKM directly dan kita work with Peri 5 Kiri Kesihatan di lembah, uh, sorry, di Bulangat dan juga di daerah Petaling. So, doctors dan nurses di KK akan ikut nama ibu yang dalam kalangan berpendapatan bawah 3,000 ringgit sehari. So, uh, kalau ibu tak ada ibu ni pun sebelum bersalin, dia akan refer, so kita akan match kepada mana station counselors So, dia akan bimbing ibu tu sampai uh, tiga session dan bagi alawan dia sempat diberi makanan dan keperluan harian Dan kita track baby tu, basically dah tabis dari diri ni sampai usia satu tahun Tapi selepas pandemik datang, arrangement tu dah agak terganggu banyak Sebab tak boleh pergi ni, dah tak boleh visit ibu di rumah So, kita try online, online tu ada like privacy issues dan also data isu, mata-mata saya tak ada phone yang kondusif untuk proses tersebut So sekarang kita tukar approach uh, Dia jadi macam local partners, NGO kecil-kecil yang berada di Kementerian Dan projek itu kerjasama dengan US Bank So US Bank yang buat data analysis, US Bank yang buat all the MRR, yang buat all the MRR, yang buat all the MRR, yang So projek itu sudah berjalan lah So kita masih jumpa isu yang sama Dan kesedaran tak tahu yang uh, tak boleh bagi sedangkan Grace uh, kepada BB dan terutamanya sebab sebenarnya lah sebab itulah kos yang boleh terlalu dan untuk breastfeed pula uh, kita rasa macam nak isu lotis sebab tak boleh tapi ada banyak elemen lain yang dibuatkan kita tak boleh uh, suasana rumah, keadaan stress dan juga ke keperluan untuk bekerja dengan keadaan yang paling segera selepas berikan yang kedua, uh, kita jawab satu projek yang boleh nadi Sebelum ni nama dia general je macam bunyi kerajaan bantuan kalau lebih susah So dia biasa kita tak nak bunyi macam kerajaan Tapi dia boleh kerajaan pun Jadi kita tukar ini lagi Dan ini macam pause lah So kita track setiap bulan Pada break awal kita bagi mengikut Pemerti lain like income Kita ukur dengan siapa yang berada di bawah Pemerti lain like income Tapi lama-lama selepas dua tahun kita tengok Dengan pandemik dan dengan kadar gaji Most of them seribu Paling tinggi seribu dua Nak sampai seribu lima tu pun tak ada siapa-siapa yang berjaya So basically semua survive je Tak ada satu family pun yang kita bawa keluar dari property dan income dalam masa 2 tahun So kita dapati lepas tu Approach ni tak berapa tepat Kita try to embrace multi-dimensional property uh, index Tengok faktor-faktor uh, lain termasuk mental health, education access uh, apa, uh, Sanitation dan sebagainya So kita sekarang sudah mula approach untuk bagi family Amau yang berbeza mengikut kata keperluan masing-masing So, custom sikit Tapi tak mudah sebab dia banyak melibatkan communication So, setiap ikut tim ni akan communicate dengan Sanjusu 
sometimes at the emergency was hospital, so ada addition money kena keluarkan. So we try to work around that. So on top of that, bila kita dapati hampir semua, hampir semua anak-anak keluarga ni, tak ada cita-cita, tak ada user screen sekolah, menaikkan sedikit, so kita develop satu lagi projek yang ada di Vila. So budak-budak yang umur sudah tahu tak boleh membaca, tak boleh menulis, kita instead cari apa talent dia, dan kita hantar dia program di luar sekolah, dibayar sepenuhnya, kos pengangkutan dan kos pendaftaran juga, contoh masuk akademi bola, masuk kelas muzik, tapi proses tu juga tidak mudah sebab untuk anak-anak tu ibu apa bercakap dan diskala apa pilihan anak tu pun is a, is a proses yang panjang. So dalam buku ni sebenarnya kita design supaya ibu dan ayah tu sebenarnya komunikasi dan cari apa yang sebenarnya benda yang anak tu boleh dapatkan skill di luar sekolah. Ramai yang mula rasa pergi ke sekolah tu tidak memberikan apa-apa added value dari sudut keluar daripada sekolah. So mereka mengalami learning poverty. So most of them duduk kelas terbakar Lambat Sensasi cik sikit boleh cerita dekat public Tapi parents yang kita jumpa mereka suka cakap Cikgu tak kisah dengan anak saya Anak saya tak boleh baca notice dia Dia pilih aja So dia suka cerita macam tu So, so tapi kita kena dengan both sides Tapi dengan rakan-rakan NGO lain kita dapati uh, Narratif ni hampir sama So on top of that kita rasa kan Bukan kita di impian, tak ada cerita-cerita Dan menarik selalu ni bila kita tanya cerita Cerita-cerita ni selalu berkaitan dengan apa yang dapat Pada rumah dia kalau uh, duduk dekat flex, dia akan tengok rider rider sini motor sebanyak dia akan tengok rider kalau duduk dekat balai polis kawasan tu semua orang jadi polis baru ni kita pergi ke Kedah, di satu kampung kampung anak bukit, kita try approach uh, sekarang ni family sis kata ke orang Malaysia so kita try approach satu kampung di dengan sekolah sekolah bagi 20 pelajar yang berpotensi untuk cemerlang dalam pembelajaran tapi start dalam kondisi kan so kita visit 20 family ni untuk tengok situasi tu And still, tim balik rasa hopeless Macam tak tahu nak buat apa dah How to help this people Sebab nak cari Tak ada development Surround itu tak ada facility tu Tidak ada enabler yang boleh bantu Dan most of them basically accept Hidup macam ni okey tu And even parents really proud Kalau anak ni macam sambil sekolah So aku ni, there is nothing to Model about So kita juga bila bertanya Ada budak dekat Pahang ni Cita-cita dia Selepas COVID ni nak jadi driver ambulans sebab dia nampak ambulans dia datang ambil orang COVID setiap hari dia kumpul dia, so dia ada new dream which is nak jadi driver ambulans so kita sekarang ni, uh, even esok actually ada tiga family yang akan dibawa ke Kizah ni uh, semua anak-anak ni daripada usia belasan sampai uh, usia tadika esok ada tiga family yang akan dibawa ke Kizah ni salah satu attack untuk kita nak bagi dia explore banyak jenis pekerjaan uh, talent yang boleh dibuat dan kita juga dibuat satu lagi projek last yang boleh teruka sebab bila kita rasa dia orang tak pernah ada experience bercuti dengan family it's very cost people kan empat tahun sekali, tiga tahun sekali mereka akan balik kampung sama ada mereka sewa trader dan kadang-kadang ada story yang kita dengar dia naik kita bila, enam anak parents naik kita bila daripada selama banyak ke Kelantan this is somehow in the world all these people semua dah ada kerja So, dia orang tak ada experience, uh, even dalam buku ni, actually kita ajar mereka untuk plan vacation dua kali setahun, dan kita akan bayarkan all the cost untuk mereka bercuti bersama keluarga, dia bukan macam lawatan sekolah yang tidak ada parents dalam experience tu kita ada parents ada dalam experience tu So, most of them blank, tak tahu uh, macam mana hotel, macam nak pergi pantai dan have a vacation, is not in the peranan So, we are trying to push supaya budak-budak ada, ada something they look outside of the world and Inspire. So, bila benda inspiration ni tak ada Bagi pergi sekolah, cukup kan makan Still ada macam tak ada something yang dry So, these are four projects yang kita sedang work on Dan bila dengar apa yang Dr. Hatiman cerita Apa yang Dr. Hatiman cerita Of course, kita rasa Satu skill ni masih kecil Dah bersahkan uh, Still have no map or idea how to go on it dan even tadi pun sempat bersama Dr. Hakim, Dr. Hakim kata sebenarnya kita kena wujudkan lebih banyak komuniti yang memberikan akses budak-budak bawah dalam 6 tahun, 5 tahun ni ada early childhood development program uh, actually we tried once kita nak buka ABBA space tapi cost nak maintain uh, dan ada teachers yang ataupun facilitators yang boleh sentiasa ada macam setiap hari macam jadi tadika tak nampak lagi cara how actually we can go about it so saya rasa saya nak buka floor ni first Siapa yang tanya soalan untuk Dr. Fatimah Boleh perempuan, clarify apa saja yang kita dengar nanti And then you can come with your ideas How we can do things differently 
And of course, our population delayed in long term. So, I think the it's sangat kurang uh, project yang memang tak satu pun touch and go to try to develop the long term relationship sehingga family family ni dia boleh buka some of their deepest secrets to us even though some of them have been abused by their husbands and stay living together tak tak berani pergi ke polis tak boleh bayar pun pergi ke polis and then suami kena tangkap macam lain tu so kita orang pun jadi macam lama-lama tak tahu kita orang semua masuk ke hal facilities ni so that's a lot of stuff that we see when we just so say we got from uh, so that we can make this life in the energy so that we can make this life in the energy so that we can make this life in the energy so that we can make this life in the energy so that we can make this life in the energy so that we can make this life in the energy so that we can make this life in the energy so that we untuk kita design universal basic income adikah kita ada mungkin few more year yang mungkin dia orang dah experience di scaling the big country ataupun kita tak experiment sebab uh, last year kita bikin apa bulan Disember last year uh, uh, saudara Azlan ada presented tentang yang one off as an experiment macam mana kita tengok dia orang punya behavioral change family, bila dia dapat berapa tu risiko ya? 150 campur yang lain-lain 450 itu cash dan lain-lain dan lain-lain itu untuk Dr. Muhammad on the universal basic income kita boleh experiment from the policy from the policy standpoint untuk Dr. Fatimah mungkin dari segi the social behavior macam mana kita nak set saya dulu bincang dengan Dr. Fatimah dan Dr. Fatimah sendiri dia bincang tentang mungkin kita perlukan kind of social mapping kalau kita ada macam apa geotagging kan mungkin kita kena ada macam uh, social tagging mungkin ada buat dunia startup boleh tengok macam mana kita boleh uh, leverage apa social technology yang kita ada supaya kita boleh tengok dah contoh benar-benar uh, saya rasa sebab pasal aku bilang kan saya hidup di bilang kan Maknanya daripada kampung Gahal tu Dengan tempat saya duduk Sampai jalan kaki Masjid yang sama Sekolah yang sama Tetapi maknanya The world view, the behavior Berbeza Tapi bila kita tengok adalah faktor-faktor yang Very unique Kita boleh combine The economic policy The social justice and point Dan juga teknologi To be combined Terima kasih Terima kasih Uh, I think that was a very interesting um, idea. Of course, I don't think I can process it enough to give a very upper, uh, insightful response. But um, I think that because you said you live in Lakatkan, um, I'm currently staying in Kajang. Uh, last month, we were doing a program lah for Peduli Merah. And I found out that it's a Pekampungan Refugees. Because it's not Dr. Mahali mentioned refugees, we don't know about them, can? Um, and we haven't explored, even in research of period poverty, ni is very new. So, banyak mana kita tak tahu. So, I just found out, just near where I live, where kita beli um, Bazaar Ramadan, kita selalu beli kan? Just nearby there, ada perkampungan refugees, where the women and girls, um, particularly the women, do not speak Malay. So, they've moved here, and they've stayed here for decades, but they cannot converse. So, um, tu satu eh, um, because I've done um, a small study lah on refugees in Selayang where I used to live before. Um, they are more, dia lagi banyak bercampur dengan orang sebab dia duduk kat market area kan, kat kawasan pasar kan, pasar orang. So, dia bercampur. So, kebanyakan refugees on that side of town uh, boleh bercakap bahasa Melayu. So, they can communicate. Okay. But what we found that from the Arabian pattern of menstruation tu, Uh, they would stay at home during their period. So, they tak keluar rumah langsung. For seven days, they wouldn't leave the house. So, they tak ada pet, dia, it's not an issue. So, they tak ada issue nak tukar pet dekat luar ke, issue of wash facility ke apa ke, sebab dia tak keluar rumah at all. So, they akan stay at home sahaja. Uh, I just want to highlight the social behaviour um, aspect lah, so we can see an example kan, nampak gambaran dia sikit. Uh, but, in Kajang, these mothers, they do not Uh, interact with the local community at all. So they don't learn the language at all. 
So not only do they not leave the house during their menstruation, they never leave the house. So you can imagine, eh, you live in another country, you lari daripada negara you, you tak keluar rumah pun untuk berpuluh tahun you hidup, you besarkan anak you, tapi you tak tahu pun outside of your community, anybody else, you tak beli barang, you you tak buat apa-apa lah basically, you just, you know, you don't mix around. So we're very segregated even in the small vicinity that we're in. I don't know about them, they might know about me, ataupun they might know about us lah, because they can see us, kan? but they don't go out. So we can see, uh, and the girls too, they don't go to school because they don't have access. They don't have access to anything. Kita tak bagi dia apa apa pun. Um, there are NGOs, alhamdulillah, they offer education. Tapi what they found is after they don't work banyak tahun, this is the thing lah. When people do work like this, it's very tiring, and that's uh, something we have to acknowledge. It's tiring, but we face a lot of, macam we we are really going against the current. Then we need to talk about the current pula after that. Like, what is the current? Why is the current going against Ken? And then always pushing against the current. Penat, penat. So after many years, uh, these kids ni tak sampai sekolah menengah. None of them make it through sekolah menengah. Sekolah rendah je. They never get to that. Especially girls. The boys, they will go to work. They will choose to work because it's a logical... Um, tak boleh buat apa pun. Because they're refugees, they don't have access to university. Nak pergi university tu, it's not... Tak, tak sampai pun lah, kan? Tak sampai pun nak terfikir nak pergi universiti. So, they just go to school sampai sekolah rendah provided by the NGO who give them education up until level dajah enam. No matter their age. So, the eldest that they thought was 16 years old. But the girls ni, once they reach puberty, they akan kahwin. So, in just next to my house, these girls who are just a bit older than my son, dah kahwin dah. And then they have children, but they don't have access to medical care. They don't have access to anything. Lah, maksudnya, and then anak dia pun takkan ke sekolah. So even though we live nearby, but because we are divided, kita segregated, we don't know each other. And we cannot understand what is happening in each other's lives. So I think to understand what happens to somebody else, we need to be able to reach out and touch each other. Just as how they cannot think what I'm thinking juga. They cannot think how, oh kita uh, bila nak ada anak ni kita dah fikir dah. Belum ada anak lagi kita dah fikir dah kan. Uh, insurance anak, education anak, anak ni dah besar nak kerja apa. Uh, dia boleh survive ke tak, vaksin ke tak vaksin. All of the things we are already thinking before even thinking of conception kan. Uh, so these are things that we think because of what we go through, our life experiences. Tapi the life experiences that they go through is different walaupun we live nearby. So it's not so much of locality sahaja, it's also the life experience too. And to understand that and for us to be able to break that, can to um, the closer we are, what we call, sebelum ni, this term kita guna masa COVID, kita panggil social distancing. Tapi in sociology, social distancing is how close and far we are between groups of people. Can uh, we ask, are you willing to have friends or do you have friends from a different group? Contohnya, different ethnicity, uh, different nationality, can. Are you willing to eat together? Can. Are, are you willing to have neighbours with? Uh, are you okay with your kids marrying someone? So, kita boleh nampak the distance between one group to another group. So, even if kita duduk sebelah pun, sometimes the social distance too is very far. Can. Kita duduk rumah jiran sebelah pun, tapi sebab we don't connect with each other, our distance is actually quite far. So the distance ni has to do with, um, I think maybe Dr. Mawani will respond to this quote, has to do with our um, question of the inequality gap. The bigger the inequality gap, it's actually the worst for our country lah kan. Tapi in Malaysia ni kita um, unfortunately diajar untuk macam happy lah kan. Macam rumah kita macam wow, kita ada gate. So separate us from our ni, location ni macam up up kan. Uh, location ni kurang up, jangan beli, jangan beli property kat sini kan. So we we like to, we like to cut that line. This is not where we, I don't go to this market sebab kat sini market macam mm, tak best lah, not my level kan. Uh, macam see my level, uh, macam tu kan. And like we boast about it as though it's something proud kan. But we don't actually connect with others. So we cannot understand. So it's easy for us to judge others. So to have an ability to see how we can break that. It's very interesting. There are, I think, experiments done, social experiments done in other countries, 
how they um, create public housing supaya tak ada that class punya difference tu kan to break that gap to create empathy and reduce the inequality gap tu lah so that would be definitely something that would be interesting to explore tapi I cannot have a more insightful response at the moment so I hope that's okay kita pergi ke satu sekolah dulu lah kan uh, sekolah ni uh, 70% daripada student dia B40 so kita dulu dengan uh, pengetua guru uh, hari orang pelajar guru display dia orang cerita uh, bila pandemik berlaku and then semua murid kena makan di atas meja belajar dalam kelas bukan di kantin so waktu tu baru mereka sedar bila budak kena beli kantin beli makanan duduk dekat kelas ramai yang tak beli makanan so orang tanya nanti cikgu cakap so Why tak ada makanan? So, all this while, for years, dia orang memang tak ada duit belanja datang ke sekolah dan tak bersarapan di rumah So, one of the beauty dekat sekolah tu adalah cikgu-cikgu tu decide sama among them setiap pagi cikgu-cikgu masak lebih bawa dan letak dekat satu tempat siapa-siapa yang tak ada makanan pagi tu just pergi datang balik So, it can be a same building but we never knew apa yang sebenarnya berlaku dalam konteks So, it's just like less than 30 kilometers from all the skyscrapers dekat KL tu So it's amazing. Okay, Dr. Saya rasa ada soalan yang berkenaan dengan uh, UPN. Terima kasih, uh, Naim. Tapi, maybe saya tambah sikit apa yang uh, Dr. Fatimah bagi tahu pasal social distance uh, dengan uh, jiran. Refugee tak boleh cakap, tak keluar. Uh. Because there's no avenue for them to be involved in the community. They cannot go to school, the children cannot go to school which means dia tak kenal mak-mak yang lain orang Malaysia dia pun tak boleh kerja they cannot work, interaction happens either at school, kalau budak-budak, ataupun at the workplace they do not, or rather they were banned from participating in this basic apa nama uh, activities they are not recognized in this country so it is a rational decision for them duduk dalam rumah, keluar kena tangkap tak mahu sebab itu ramai tak mahu pergi vaksin. Keluar, kena masuk jail. Lepas itu, budak-budak mati dalam uh, apa, uh, pusat tahanan kan. So, we do not allow them uh, to participate in in uh, activities. So, it dehumanizing. Sweden, when they take the refugees from Afghanistan, from other countries, uh, the first thing they did, or they've been doing, to ask the refugees to learn Swedish language. When you learn, you're part of society. When you cannot speak, you know, society, you, you tak boleh buat apa lah, nak pergi pejam, tak boleh, saya tak boleh cakap. It's a negara, Islamic state. We are not Islamic state. Because we don't do such thing. Which to me is extremely uh, zalim. Yang penting agama pun mangkuk hayu tak ada. No, yesterday he was telling the kid should not make a police report. What kind of nonsense is that? Should not announce publicly. Because got molested. Now what is if the father beat up the child? Not molested, huh? beat up the son, let's say. Would he still say, father jangan buat police report? It's already a criminal act. And it's Menteri Agama. Menteri and Agama cannot be in the same sentence. It's an oxymoron. And he's a moron, I think. It's, it's, I was shocked to read that. Jaga ayat. Mana boleh? You don't you take care of the father, you don't take care of the child. It's a young girl. So that's on refugee today. I just wanna wanna add because our policy don't encourage don't encourage them. On universal basic income, the question is who pays? Basic income everybody gets. Everybody. First, is it fair? Naim dapat, saya dapat, dia dapat. Dr. Fatimah pun dapat, is it fair? Probably it's not fair. Number two, how are we going to pay? We say government pay. Government has no money. Somebody has to pay. Through direct tax ke, indirect tax ke, indirect uh, cukai excise ke, ataupun cukai pendapatan ke, GST ke, whatever. Somebody has to pay, which means rakyat has to pay. Who will pay? Huh? And number three, who would, who would get it, who would pay, number three, source of this funding. It's not that we have a lot of money. Kita ada pun, duk butang ke ikan kan, cukup-cukup makan lah. Who gonna, how are we gonna raise funding for this? 
is this a new idea, universal? It's not. We spend, tadi kita cakap, 50 billion is universal. Price subsidies is universal. Siapa nak buat petrol, orang kaya kan, orang miskin kan, foreigner kan, non-foreigner, buat petrol, dapat subsidi. Universal. Is this fair? It's not fair. Right? If you take the money for, let's say, UBI, to give to UBI, it means you take from something else to give to UBI. Perhaps, or rather I believe, the optimal approach is to use a life cycle approach. So in every cycle, government intervene. Masa beranak, masa kecil-kecil, ya? masa beranak, 1,000 days tu, masa kecil, starting milk, ke whatever kena buka depan, masa budak sekolah, masa bekerja. Contohnya bila hilang kerja, what happened? Where is the government comes in? So the government become like a circus net. Dia jatuh, pop, dia naik balik. Eh? Not a safety net. A circus net. Bukan jadi clown lah. Jatuh, dia naik balik. Then after kerja, when they retire, not enough income, how the government inject. So the intervention should be along the life cycle, not just UBI when they work or when they retire. The idea for UBI, I think is more appropriate given apa mangkuhayu yang buat keluar, apa, uh, government policy so buat keluar daripada EPF tu, whereas government should give is for retirees. Perhaps you want to consider social pension, universal social pension, uh, universal for retirees, rather than UBI for everybody else. So it's become universal but targeted for selected groups. I think that's more uh, optimal. Otherwise, in terms of fairness, going to be issue. In terms of targeting, going to be issue. In terms of uh, uh, source of funding, is going to be come an issue. racist country kita blame everything during covid kita blame refugee ha dia pala penyebab ni kedebuk rumah wilayah ni patau refugee subsidi is subsidi nak 80 billion what the government say foreigner makan ayam subsidize yang si kaya bantai bo dalam petrol dalam BNW kita tak bising dia beli ayam kita complain berapa ramai dia makan ayam we are very racist. Everything we blame to them. So when comment netizen, it's not surprising. The sad lah. Kerajaan kita, mereka ni lah penyebab. Mereka ni lah jawab. Crime, mereka ni. Which is not true lah. Most crime perpetrated by locals. Not foreigners. Not Indon, not Bangla, not Myanmar, not refugee. No, not true. Second, subsidy is not. Bukan mereka yang sapu. They don't use motor car. The biggest subsidy, 50 billion, about 30 billion is from petrol. They don't use it. Who use it? Orang kaya yang use it. Bukan orang miskin, bukan refugee. Tapi kita, oh, banyak yang dapat, refugee dapat. It's not true. Who said that? Refugee makan ayam kita. Who said that? It's a prime minister. Can you imagine? We are, that's why I say we are a racist country. I don't want to make this in poli uh, political. But the power of choosing is in our hands. We choose it well. Tak kira parti mana. Choose orang yang baik hati. Orang yang empathize. Orang yang concern issue issue ni, DAP ka, PAS ka, doesn't matter as long as he's a right, good person. Hmm, kumpul ya. Saya mungkin boleh bagi beberapa respon lah kalau kita lihat pertamanya dari segi tadi Tuan Tuan Mahmoud Perang disentuh berkaitan dengan dan uh, kita tengok sebenarnya satu perkara yang ada saya jarang dia ada perhatian oleh mana-mana NGO ataupun orang di Malaysia ialah tentang 
kepentingan kanak-kanak untuk bermain eh? uh, Memang kanak-kanak naturally they, they like to play, right? Okay, memang mereka akan bermain apa sahaja Tapi kita tak pernah ada bagaimana anak-anak orang miskin bermain Okay, adakah kita sediakan bola Adakah padang itu boleh di akses oleh mereka Itu Cerita pasal taman permainan memanglah Malaysia ni Taman permainannya Segitulah keadaannya kan Okay, baik di bandar atau di mana pun Di mana tempat, itulah yang rasa yang elok Kapta Jaya aja kot Kalau orang Kapta Jaya tak banyak pergi uh, Taman-taman ni Sebab saya sebagai pengguna tetap Taman-taman di Kapta Jaya Memang orang Kapta Jaya yang eh, 75 ribu tu tak pergi Yang datang orang daripada Kajar, orang daripada luar Kan, eh, saya lah saya <laughs> daripada pukul pagi, daripada pukul 6 pagi sampai pukul 7 malam anda tak akan jumpa orang Kota Jajah <laughs> sebab apa? sebab tu ada lebih indikator dia pada taman permainan yang cantik uh, yang masih tidak di tidak disemari, tidak digunakan oleh kanak-kanak eh. tapi kalau kita pergi ke tempat yang lain eh, kita tengok vandalism, eh, kesalahan eh, kanak-kanak remaja pun tapi itu uh, taman permainan tapi bahan-bahan untuk bermain Mainan-mainan yang hanya anak orang kaya-kaya je boleh beli Adakah boleh turut dinikmati? Eh, saya boleh teringat lagi masa dulu belajar lah eh. Maksudnya kita tak payah beli mainan lah, kita boleh pergi ke library mainan eh. ha, Tak payah beli mainan sesusah, kita boleh uh, pinjam selama 2 minggu So anak kita boleh dapat akses mainan tersebut Lepas 2 minggu kita boleh pulangkan uh, Tak ada lah pula uh, orang kat kaunter library tu cek mainan rosak ke apa ke tak ada Eh, dia percaya, eh, culture of trust tu ada Saya rasa benda tu perlu wujud di Malaysia eh, Bayangkanlah dalam mereka tak keluar rumah eh, Macam dia sebutkan tadi Anak-anak mereka nak main apa? Eh, kalau kita zaman kita kecil kat kampung, we can explore Kalau kat kampung kan, nak sikal, kan, nak masuk parit Macam-macam kita boleh buat Yang dalam hutan bandar ni, apa sahaja yang mereka boleh buat eh, Bayangkan mereka daripada kanak-kanak, daripada kecil, daripada kecil, mereka tidak ada Alat mainan yang merangsang minda mereka Yang ada hanya TV Astro okay. <laughs> So Astro tu penting sebab itulah Cara untuk mendiamkan anak mereka So ibu dan bapa boleh bekerja ha, Itu penting kena ingat Dia bukan ada di situ sama ada sembangan ke Ataupun dia beli ke Itu adalah isu tapi TV adalah instrumen penting dalam keluarga uh, Malaysia <laughs> Okay <laughs> Alright So Why not Abah mungkin release satu projek untuk mewujudkan banyak community base yang mana orang-orang kaya ni ada banyak mainan kita tak tahu anak ada mainan apa setiap minggu dia beli boleh donate sampah a very good condition lagi kan ha? untuk digunakan kan ha, kita ada influencer kat sini kita boleh mobilize the whole nation kan kita tahu kawan-kawan kita ada banyak bertong-tong uh, mainan kat rumah tu kan so Arba boleh mobilize dan kita boleh buat satu center di banyak tempat Counter-counter, sama ada bergerak dan sebagainya Tapi dalam bentuk pinjaman, dia tidak boleh berikan terus nah, Sebab bila dia pinjaman, sebab kanak-kanak ni ada, ada satu perangai dia uh, They are easily bought kan? nah, Sebab tu lah bapak-bapak kena, kena beli mainan baru So, sebab kita kena pinjam, so mereka bertukar, bertukar kan? Dan kita sanitize lah bila kita uh, Apa? Kita dah ambil kepada sebagainya Itu antara perkara penting lah yang saya nampak Dan dengan sama Arba ada team yang bagus untuk IT You boleh buat macam uh, geolocation untuk mana taman-taman permainan, public space yang orang boleh access bukan sekadar orang B40 yang malah satu Malaysia boleh tengok kan, dah ada kajar ni berapa spot ada so kita, dalam, kita boleh buat satu indicator, kita boleh buat satu indeks kesihatan dan juga kan padang uh, selepas ni berapa orang yang main? berapa kali? berapa banyak? kan, kawasan selepas ni ada berapa banyak public space kalau tak ada memang teruk lah kawasan tu Kan? We shouldn't buy so, Maksudnya kita boleh buat macam Good postcode and bad postcode Kalau kat negara Europe, Europe dia orang ada buat untuk uh, Crime rate Tapi kat Malaysia kita boleh buat Untuk children kan? Postcode ni bagus tak nak membesarkan anak kan? Tak ada pada permainan So we will push the developer We will push the PBT to provide that kind of kan? Kan? Kita, kita push Uh, agensi-agensi kerajaan yang macam ni supaya mereka tahu orang postcode dia paling teruk sekali ha, nampak? ok, boleh tak kita buat? boleh kan? kita ada banyak social influencer yang boleh mengalami masyarakat untuk membuat self-reporting kita tak payah susah, bila ada apps tu mereka boleh buat self-reporting kawasan mereka ada size apa berapa location dia 
Google boleh identify kan? dan kita boleh tahu kan? untuk keluasan dan boleh kaitkan dengan kawasan ku yang dosen buat tu kan ha, so kita boleh relate ha, dan kita boleh tahu anak-anak kanak-kanak yang sedang menghadapi defisit bermain bila dia defisit bermain dia mempunyai masalah untuk belajar itu dia kena ingat ha, pembelajaran pertama ni ialah true play ha, ok Um, um, saya suka bila uh, Ustaz Ustaz sebut tentang rasa hopeless dan then, tadi pun para pun ada mention pasal the feeling of hopeless rasa bila usually bila kita pergi misi I've been to few missions overseas juga uh, di balik tu I ada symptom of PTSD uh, post traumatic syndrome uh, I tak mimpi pelik-pelik mimpi darah-darah kena bom lah apalah ada tak boleh tidur and then ada rasa tak heavy emotions. Uh, tadi pun I dah macam start sebab when we talk about child poverty sebab kita tahu um, the needs of uh, macam support to them um, because I like vulnerable communities, uh, societies and um, apa? group um, so the thing of hopeless uh, kita rasa bila kita pergi dekat tempat-tempat uh, yang susah ni kita rasa macam eh, banyak benda lah aku nak tolong uh, and then masa uh, we went to Afrika two months ago and then ada one of the lady uh, uh, share about macam mana orang guna najis gajah untuk buat hat uh, sebab najis, najis gajah yang kering tu uh, dia orang boleh absorb more increase kot so dia akan macam letak kain letak najis gajah and then buat hat so kita oh we need to help in uh, period poverty in that, in that area tapi bila kita fikir ok takkan kita nak always uh, provide uh, disposable pads sebab kita dan dia macam tak sustainable takkan nak provide like macam sepanjang orang mampu beli sendiri uh, then nak bagi menstrual cup uh, ataupun clothes pads uh, tapi orang tak ada clean water to wash it uh, so uh, and then that area pula lepas tu chai yang tak, tak, tak mampu pergi sekolah pula lepas tu the school is too far kena jalan 2 jam just to go to school so ada tu macam kena jalan, uh, tunggu dia besar sikit baru dia pergi sekolah sebab 7 to 9 years tu tu puyang untuk jalan 2 hours just to go to school uh, so cakap kenapa tak pergi sekolah awal sebab uh, too dangerous for for him so 11 tahun baru start pergi sekolah sebab jauh sangat eh. lepas tu tiba pula isu tak cukup makan, tak ada education banyak-banyak macam banyak sangat area yang kita rasa kita nak tolong sampai rasa hopeless kan uh, so uh, if you guys punya opinion mungkin rasa which area should be prioritized in helping macam air ke ataupun like period ke apa ke and then uh, macam mana cara untuk kita optimize make the macam optimal kind help tu mungkin ada cara yang kita boleh buat macam in one pun boleh help uh, touch other areas juga yeah, thank you terima kasih banyak lagi mungkin satu yang terakhir Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Selamat saya Syedira uh, Thank you so much for the uh, sharing session today Saya pun rasa sangat heavy Emotionally when I heard it uh, When you speak tadi um, Saya Mungkin ingin beri cadangan dan juga uh, Relatekan kepada my personal stories When you say uh, Progression seorang kanak-kanak sampai Dia membesarkan period poverty Tak cukup makanan, drop out from schools uh, Racism These are all the experiences that I have personally uh, felt or at least experienced and seen uh, while growing up um, because my parents are actually from Cambodia Jadi, um, I have felt a little bit of poverty uh, cousin-cousin yang keluar daripada sekolah menerti sekolah kerana mereka uh, inginkan punca pendapatan yang lebih stable untuk kerana mereka period poverty um, touch, uh, abuse uh, semua ni lah jadi, um, having gone through that experience uh, and saya rasa ada keperluannya untuk memberi uh, satu harapan dan juga mungkin satu sort of mentorship kepada anak-anak ini I'm not sure how sustainable uh, will that be sebab nak cari mentor one to one ke, one to ten ke, one to fifty, it doesn't matter but uh, we need to find probably a model that is uh, sustainable to provide them with a mentorship dan juga harapan So what this does is uh, from the from the 
perspective of the person yang menjadi mentor itu who have gone through certain experiences and have made it out of the whatever experiences that they have gone through satu di memberi awareness kepada masyarakat to humanize these stories that this behind these stories are actual human beings when Dr. Um, Muhammad was speaking he gave in a lot of data but kata Dr. Nato Dr. Bapak first we believe in Allah secondly we believe in data so when you mention all these data I was trying to much really make sense of this number by imagining that every percentage that you mentioned is translated into millions of kanak-kanak, rakyat Malaysia, wanita dan sebagainya uh, and it's a big issue jadi kalau kita sangat sebut 8 peratus, 10 peratus, 25 peratus mungkin rakyat Malaysia ni tak dapat bayangkan but tetapi kalau ada uh, satu bentuk penceritaan yang boleh dikongsikan kepada rakyat Malaysia especially when we meet um, uh, social influences I am right this evening mungkin ia akan uh, memberi satu impact yang besar kepada masyarakat walaupun social media ni uh, uh, mungkin kita punya bubble ni mungkin orang yang kaya ataupun educated tetapi kalau katakan seorang cikgu pun dia dengar cerita-cerita manusia ni mungkin dia akan translate into uh, you know, approach at school dengan anak-anak dan sebagainya I have faced racism in school as well. The moment they found out that I am not a Mati, kategori kanak, uh, kategori bangsa lain-lain, menang je. Dipanggil ke depan, masa dah tahu IPSR tu, eh, Syahira, awak ni bangsa lain-lain ni, boleh ke? Nak pergi IPSR. Macam tak tahu kan? So, macam, walaupun, you know, one line comment macam tu memang memberi impact. Mak saya jual nasi lemak. Tak berani nak kata, nak nak bantu orang kata, oh, kita ada ayah kerja kerajaan sebab takut orang tak pilih daripada stok kita contohnya ataupun kita ni orang pemboja mungkin orang tak nak beli nasi rumah daripada kita mungkin dia akan pergi ke desa betul jadi benda-benda ni these are all human stories that need to be told satu memberi awareness satu lagi ialah memberi harapan kepada anak-anak ni bahawa so harapan ni sometimes that's the only thing they have that's the only thing they have and kalau ada organisasi yang committed untuk bekerja dan untuk mengeluarkan mereka daripada um, poverty cycle ni that it gives them a bigger hope lah maksudnya ok, someone cares for me and someone has made it out of this poverty cycle so insyaAllah I can do it so two things, one is to give awareness and satu lagi saya nak minta mungkin uh, speakers boleh kongsikan cara-cara yang beretika untuk menyampaikan kisah poverty so poverty point happens I think I'm going to start to talk about it. Poverty ni, it has to look in a certain way in the eye of the society. Paling kotor, busuk, buka kodoh, um, tak pergi sekolah. But poverty doesn't look that way sahaja. Urban poverty happens. Poverty yang kat Kelantan, kat Hulu, berdalam pun happens. So awareness is important. And number two is to give hope to the children. But we need to find a sustainable model. Lah. Sebab we don't want a mentor to go in Masuklah follow up, and it breaks the heart of the children juga. Okay, sama. Terima kasih banyak sebab sesuatu yang berlaku ini. Susulan dari kakak itu tadi sebut dalam research yang berlaku di luar kali keluar kali dua belas tahun sebelum kita berdata permainan zaman kuno. So, jika kita kaji terbiasa, kita ada small eye, tak tahu what toys yang berada, what books yang berada. Mungkin kalau kita tahu small eye, kita tahu apa yang berada. Mungkin kalau kita tahu small eye, kita tahu apa yang berada. Mungkin kalau kita tahu small eye, kita tahu apa yang berada. Mungkin kalau kita tahu small eye, kita tahu apa yang berada. Mungkin kalau kita tahu small eye, kita tahu apa yang berada. Mungkin kalau kita tahu small eye, kita tahu apa yang berada. Dapat mainan lori yang dah lima tahun main tu And he was so excited Dapat lori tu Pas dah Ada tak ada experience ni kenapa? Maybe he did miss that childhood experience of having toys and everything Things to play with So I think uh, kita ada masa di kurang lima belas nombor ni Sebelum kita Amat uh, dulu kan Saya mulakan dengan Dia discuss lagi Hmm Oh I think number one, my mind to have a discussion. Uh, I think it affects me as well. Um, every time, the what we say, every time kita, as even as a researcher, whenever we go down to do the research, I pun, uh, I need to take some time before I go back, before duduk dan kreatif sekejap proses. Sometimes it takes a few days to just process what did I see, what um, what does it mean, what am I supposed to do now? Uh, kita tak boleh buat apa-apa kat I'm just one person. Kan, uh, sama juga when we started out with our period poverty research, I supposed to give hope lah to everybody. 
when um, no, uh, how I started out with Beirut Poverty Research New, we were doing a uh, food a uh, food drive, which is not a sustainable thing, but we we do it anyway lah. Masa tu tengah bagi food drive dekat uh, pasar seni um, for uh, gelandangan. Lepas tu uh, kakak tu cakap, ada tak pet? Um, I macam privileged person yang macam, huh, kenapa dia minta pet? Uh, but what sh- I, and I said, tak ada, kita ada food je. Tapi I macam jam dekat situ. I froze, um, I didn't help her. Because I was just macam blur. And then I came home and I said, dia tak ada pet. And then I said, why would I think that she could buy pet? Dia tak boleh beli food. But I am so oblivious. Because of my privilege, I'm completely blind to think that, you know, others are not going through that. So, I macam, apa nak buat ni, kan? Um, actually, period issues are not my research area. So, I pergi buat uh, literature review, tak ada apa-apa. We have zero research on period poverty before this. Zero. And then, I said, okay, apa nak buat ni? Tak ada, nobody's talking about it, takkanlah. The issue doesn't exist, I'm, the issue exists, I'm sure. So, I started to talk to NGO friends, the issue is very real. But nobody talks about it. So, I said, nak try tak? Because I really want to know. Because masa tu baru keluar, 2018 UNICEF report on stunting. And I said, if the kids cannot eat proper food, there's a chance that they cannot have access to sanitary pad. Masa tu, my thinking was also still sanitary pad. So, I look at urban poverty. And when I started my research, memang I jam sebab there were so many problems. Uh, one of the problems that I um, found that I stumbled upon that wasn't part of the problem that I wanted to research was there was no dream, tak ada aspiration. I was so um, heartbroken. Many months, I tak tahu nak buat apa sebab I rasa sedih sangat. None of the girls that we interviewed had any aspiration, tak ada. The most that they wanted to do was nak kerja handphone, kedai handphone ke kedai, kedai, kerja kedai Aceh. Yang tu yang ada aspiration. I want to be something which is I want to work at that shop. The rest tak ada. Can you imagine kita macam it wasn't really, you know this is like warm up question sebelum kita buat research kan kita warm up dulu. But I macam, huh, I thought was the first group, second group, third group, tak ada. None of them. I macam, oh okay. I, I remember growing up, I had like Five dreams, again. <laughs> nak jadi ni, nak jadi tu, nak jadi ni. So many things that I wanted to be, but they didn't have any. So, it is it is part of, you know, doing the work that we will recognize that. But what I want to highlight sebenarnya, is that we're not meant to do this alone. The reason why we feel so hopeless is because kita always push against the current without questioning, why is, why is the current going the opposite way? So, what we need to do is to shift the current. That's why we have the power to make that. Sebenarnya, all of us had the power to do that. So as we started out, it was nobody. Tak ada orang nak buat benda tu. But as we come together, collaborated with each other, I jumpa NGO friends, I had media friends who wanted to highlight the issue. Tak pernah keluar issue on period poverty on mainstream media. But we had media friends who were brave enough to push the story kepada editor. Many editors tak nak bawa story period. It's not... It's not appropriate for mainstream media, but they push because we collaborate with each other. People who want to work in policy, people who want to work with research. So the hope comes from us collaborating with one another. Kalau kita work alone, memang it feels hopeless. But if we come together and we have to, we have to challenge the current. Not we come together and push the current. We come together to shift the current, make it work. Make it work for everybody. And I think we also have to change the narrative. Narrative to always focusing on one success story in a thousand. Kita nak focus one successful kid in a sea of a million kids. And then kita nak highlight that story. Without questioning, kenapa ada 999,999 yang susah? There's something wrong with the system. It's not a problem of whether this kid, can we get this kid out? Change the system so all the kids can get out. Bukan, let's get this kid out, and then, okay, we choose which one. Can out of 100 tu, seorang je terpilih. Kenapa seorang je terpilih? Change the system so everybody gets out. So, to feel more hopeful, we have to question what's wrong with the system. Why is it not working? Can instead of like, okay, jom kita. Because orang Malaysia ni, so generous tau kadang-kadang. When we talk about period poverty, I will share the honest truth. Eh? 
um, I highlight Fira Poverty Baik Kali, I cakap, don't give out pets. Tapi, with me, I have thousands of pets. But we cannot figure out how can we deliver this pet sustainably. But every now and then, I will get a call. Dr. Fatima, kita ada pet. Nak bagi dekat you. I said, I tak nak pet. Don't give me pets. I cannot solve this problem. When you give me pet, are you going to give this pet every month for the rest of this kid's life, for the rest of the family's life? You tak boleh buat tu. Don't give out pets. You know, we have to think. We have to challenge also the people who want to do one-off donation, also the people who want to help. Sama juga macam kita. Kita nak bantu tapi kita nak cepat kan? QR code je lah tolong orang. Phew, I've done my good today, Alhamdulillah. Kan? But actually, our neighbours are next to us. Needs everyday support. Sama juga macam when we talk about children and playing and reading kan? That sometimes, what is missing is also time. We have to talk about the politics of time. Sebab not everybody has access to time. And children in poverty particularly, they don't have the time of the parents. Parents tu tak ada time. The time that the parents give to the children is what will grow the children juga. That they know that they're supposed to engage with the child. It will have a developmental effect on the children. So time is very important. Ni, some of the mothers in work three jobs are on drugs, on performance drugs to work jobs so that they can pay for the kids. Can while they cannot, they don't have time with their kids. Tak pernah dibacakan buku macam kita kan. Oh, it's big time. Okay, time to read together. Come, mama, mama bacakan buku. That has to do with the child's ability to perform later. Main main sama sama. Do we do? They don't have time. Can it's not just they don't have the material. They don't have the time. So we have to make sure that bukan kita. Okay, adik me, uh, anti bacakan buku. Anti ni boleh datang setiap hari tak? Nak bacakan buku. Tak boleh. So we have to give time too. The family. So it shouldn't be limited approach. It has to be a systemic approach. So we have to recognize that kita can fix the system. Not just focusing on satu element, satu element, satu element. But because they're all interconnected. After a while, we realize that they're all interconnected. But it's overwhelming. But actually, it's interconnected because it's a system. System work in an interconnected way. So we fix the system. But we have to fix it together. Uh, so that's something that we can do to fix a lot of things. Banyak benda yang kita boleh fix so that we we reduce the inequality gap. So hopefully, it's something for us to be hopeful about. It is a problem. We recognize that it's a problem, but it doesn't mean that we can't do something about it. Thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak untuk membacakan itu. Ada satu banyak kaji yang boleh boleh cari di YouTube dan juga Google. Vocab gap between budak miskin dan budak yang sedang lama. Ia masuk sekolah, dia orang dah dah di belakang jauh sebab tak cukup moket. Moket adalah pintu imajinasi untuk tidak dunia. Dia masuk sekolah tu dia orang dah titik garis mula dah belum pun dah tak pen. Dia mula jauh ni. Baiklah tuan-tuan kali, it will be last piece dia masuk. Oh. The book is very awful. Ini adalah story of Pandora Box. When the box was open, every all the evil comes out, right? But the last thing that came out from the box was the box. Even though that she released all the evil thing, but she also came. Oh, and when the lady at the back says that she was a little white after the white, she saw that I think we should take comfort that God said, even God will not burden us, you know, uh, so like, uh, not burden is something that we cannot bear. Uh, we have everything we can bear. Um, what then should be the focus? I think it depends what you're passionate about. Um, are you passionate about education? Are you passionate about kids? So what you're passionate then become enjoyable, it's not work. I think there's many issues with this down well, jello, jello. but how do you focus on something that you really enjoy doing? It? That should be our focus. Dr. Fatima on Fatima, or what is something is passionate. The overall Akin, uh, our Akin uh, issue is that you want all these things to be fixed. The marketable economic, socio-economic stability matters. Which means confidence matters. Whatever policy the government introduced, it must be still confidence. Right, I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about. 
when there's no confidence, nobody will manifest. Uh, for, for me, I like to focus on these macro issues because this is an overarching thing. But then we get, right? This is where all the EU's government policy comes in. So whatever that you like, you, you focus on that and uh, do it, uh, we do it our very uh, best. I think that's very um, important. And the overall, overall idea, you know, we did our study during COVID, but then bagi kalau rumah ini kan, tak boleh bayar, electric discount, bagi uh, cash, right? EPF, uh, for clock. We ask them, what do you want? You know all that. We want jobs. Nak kerja. Ni ni tiang. Ada kerja, I solve anything. I do not know. Do, do need you. Don't monitor it. Don't lose that. Mesti kita dapat monitor it. I want jobs. That is the most important. And to create job confidence, important lah. Kalau tak confident, tak ikut lah. Kau boleh buka kedai. Bila tak buka kedai, satu luar, tiga orang tak ada. So confidence uh, uh, matter. And we help people, I think, yang over benda yang pertama untuk beri macam mana dapat pekerjaan. I think this uh, important. Yeah? On, uh, apa nama? On etiket, on poverty, ya. Kena bila poverty point. I think it's very common to have a starting, 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 starting. I think that's one story give hope, give inspiration. I think this kind of stories must uh, come on. Eh? Social mobility, like a flat guy, on Susata, this must come on. We have a lot of good stories, role model. Contoh CJ, tu rumah ni, raised by the grandparents, on Kelantan ni, huh? but become the attack squad. Good inspiration. See, uh, Chief Justice, attack squad. Chief Justice, sorry, ma- woman, Kelantan, such an inspirational lady. The problem is sometimes we do not have a good role model. We have a role model, there's a book, maybe I end with this. There's a book, I think every Malaysian must read concept of hero in Malay society. Who are our heroes? Concept of hero Malay societies, written in the 1960s, 1970s. Raya, who win? Little by sorry, but we must win. Kalau tanya yang Melayu, siapa hero? Lagi Makila, apa? Makila is not nationalist. Tak cepat? Tua. Are these two good heroes? Cepat, they like MR, they don't know all, they don't know all. That's what happened. And the Sultan Bia, 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 Sebab ada yang mistik. So tu dia rogol lah, tak ada yang istana. Tu ada mistik. Dia rogol bundik kesayangan di Sultan. So dia tak boleh jadi lah. Tak boleh orang yang dia guna makan makit, no problem. Dia boleh kacau ke fans, siap. So dia boleh tak boleh jalan. Oh, tuah. Keluar. Dia nak bila tuah lagi. Tuah pula, is it a good hero? Dia ada karakteristik of tuah, which is, must be, Learn and practice by this. So, for them, he can speak about 10 languages. Second language, he learn Western. Then he learn Thai. So, he's a good diplomat. He learn Chinese, he learn Arabic. Good skills. Yeah. Good diplomat. Pandai perang. Good skills. But they are not so. Dua kali, you know. Bila kali pertama, masa dia nabi atam di Pahangan. So, then the document, apa dia kata? Alhamdulillah. Bukan kita Sultan membuat ya? Alhamdulillah To regain back Sultan I'm telling this story because I think it's important to know The model that we aspire To regain back the confidence of the Sultan Dia di mana? Dia di Baham kan? Dia tahu Sultan Sultan Tun Tejah Dia tiba rumah Tun Tejah Bapa dia penara Dia duduk rumah Penara Panggil ayam, panggil ibu dia pandai Dia pandai dia cerita Pasal mak bapa ni dia tunjuk Especially dia pandai 
So we always have a wrong models. So I'm going to feed them. My example, let me go to our model. Those with titles. Kalau kan si, kursi tak ada ni, kursi special. Kena empuk. Any event you be, kalau ada pembesar datang, kursi ni sini. Kalau you empuk kursi macam ni. We only differentiate title. Yang kaya. Because he's rich, therefore he must be smart. The jury, no problem. We don't aspire to our young. Make changes to society. Only recently we talk about CJ. Tanya, most of the how many people are going to say what is Everybody in Malaysia go to hard millions because of it. It's all one issue. They have got study in the Pina, they have got the PRT, 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 they have So you create that savings for for hard. The role model cannot be those who are powerful, those who are materialistic, those who are fat, but those who make Good changes to society. We do not have those who are corporates about transferring money, transferring goods. No, no. I'm not saying this. Laughing matters. Najib went to jail, lah. They want to get his ass, right? His ass borrowed from, borrowed from Pak. Who will want to get his ass? Pak ni duit kerja kerja, Pak bayar dia, Pak main, Pak bayar dia. Four million. Who approve that money? Who gave to SRC? It's a three-page proposal. Who? The guy who broke in fact is on public information. That's the Azlan Hashem. Not you. He was the head, he was the investment panel of Kuwa. The department of Kazana, the department of Kazana, the department of Kuwa, the investment panel of the Kuwa. So what's wrong again? That's the white woman. He was my bank, sit down on the top, you know, and then he did some stuff, you know. He thought, good job, baby. But they don't want to close their eyes. Because they can't see you, they probably don't want to play like open. No, they should be in jail. Don't worship them. So, raw model must have the right raw model. Which means you cannot be fiddled, you cannot be, apa nama, tak soap, or to look sebelah mata, or allow, cut them some snack, bangsa wan. Royals and the three, the number three, the most important three, religious leaders. I use the word religious, but I'm not generously. You know, religious leaders are there, politicians. I said, yeah. I think role model is important. So when we talk to kids, then we inspire them. They are always with somebody who is good, who is compassionate, who is merciful, who makes changes. Not those who are rich, not those who are retired, not because they are royals. And that depends on us because we should not treat these people any different than we treat. You know, my mother, my mother, we should be the same. When we invite them, give them the same chair, same drink. So we don't dress, address them kind of fancy. Oh, you and me, you and I. So we can get that news now, see? So how we treat is important. I think the concept of role model. When you ask, it's extremely to me it's important. People aspire to be like that. If you aspire to be like that, you can't 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 be like that. You never know how to teach anybody to somebody anybody. You only kiss the hands of our parents, not from anybody else. But then when you do your work, I think it helps. It's still, for the moment, not just confidence, allow them to have the right to work that. It makes a lot of Thank you very much, Dr. Maria. Saya mula-mula sebelum kami masih banyak yang apa yang kita perlu memang ada dua. Tapi selepas this final conclusion ni, I'm ready to be called to get up. Alright, saya 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 tak nak tak nak tambah apa pun. I think it's good enough. Even one of the biggest foundation in Dunia, Gates and Melinda Foundation, with the biggest fight they have, 50 billion US dollar, they always focusing the narrative that it's all about making progress. It's all about making progress. 
So even in our stories, we have small small stories that maybe tak boleh nak celebrate macam tanah sunyi guys apa apa buat. Tapi budak yang okay sampai umur sepuluh tahun tak pergi sekolah. Selepas nak orang dia sekarang pergi sekolah. Yang dia sendiri di kemurungan, she is she is so happy to be in school. Every morning dia bangun paling awal dia siap sendiri and she can talk. So we have hundreds of those kind of stories yang sebenarnya keep motivating us to keep going because it's all about progress. So thank you very very much for all of you. Uh, I cannot thank you all enough. Uh, I'm really really uh, happy today. Uh, saya sangat mengalami bukan kesudian waktu bersama kita support dengan kita tadi. Kita berkata sebab depan ini kita boleh buat lagi uh, sesi-sesi yang mendalam yang intimate dan mungkin kita boleh grow this force, powerful force is bigger and bigger and as all the panelists have said uh, kita ada satu line je and we got to choose between being pessimistic or hopeful so why not choose hopeful because that's the only thing that makes us excited about future so itu saja saya ucap terima kasih banyak jumpa lagi uh, jangan segan-segan habiskan kuih-kuih ni uh, bayangkan ada orang tak makan <laughs> Habiskan dan uh, kita kita ada sesi bergambar Kalau boleh uh, kita ini pergi dekat the area uh, So fotografer boleh catch the uh, pictures dan semua And then we can make a video later So thank you very much Sekian Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh